dollars. Antiwar.com reports addressing the possibility of Congress blocking the Iran nuclear deal with the P5 plus one. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest warned that such a move would isolate the United States internationally and would render U.S. sanctions against Iran, many of which are supposed to be lifted by the deal, effectively unenforceable. Earnest went on to say that the sanctions were what brought Iran to the table to negotiate in the first place, and if the U.S. Congress kills the deal, they would get all the benefits of the deal without having to give up anything. The argument makes some sense as the U.S. sanctions were grudgingly supported internationally on the idea that it would lead to a deal like the one finally reached. If the U.S. reneged on the internationally backed deal after finally getting it done, many nations would probably balk at letting the U.S. sanctions return unchallenged. At any rate, this is seen as extremely unlikely as there would need to be a supermajority in both houses of Congress to block the deal, and despite some claims to the contrary from hawks and a lot of money being poured into the campaign by the Israeli lobby, that's likely an unattainable number for congressmen to sway. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports seven employees of the maximum security prison where Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was being held have been charged in his escape. Mexico's attorney general said Friday that the prison workers will be jailed in the state of Guanajuato as the investigation continues. Officials did not release the names of the suspects or their role in the prison. Federal sources told Mexican Daily Reforma seven men and two women who worked security at the prison helped Guzman escape on July 12th. Earlier in the week, Mexican officials said it took guards 18 minutes to respond to Guzman's cell the night he escaped. Investigators are interviewing dozens of others who may have aided in Guzman's escape. Among them is prison director Valentin Cardenas. Interior Minister Miguel Angel Osorio Chong said at a news conference, this is part of what the Attorney General's office is looking at if the protocols were fulfilled in the correct times. Guzman was last seen at the Altaplano Federal Prison in the town of Alma Loyo de Juarez in the state of Mexico at 8.52 p.m. on July 12th. He escaped through a mile-long tunnel in a shower area shielded by a short wall for privacy. Closed-circuit video shows him entering the shower area twice fully clothed and bending down. The second time, he never resurfaced. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports more than half of Germans think the planned deal with Greece is bad and many have preferred that the crisis-stricken country left the Eurozone rather than getting the chance for further aid, according to an opinion poll. Lawmakers in Germany, the biggest contributor to Eurozone bailouts, on Friday gave their go-ahead for the currency bloc to negotiate a third bailout for Greece that could total 86 billion euros over three years. In the YouGov survey seen by German newspaper Welt am Sonntag, 56% of respondents said they thought the plan for such a deal with Greece was bad, with just over one-fifth of those saying it was very bad. Only 2% deemed it to be positive, while another 27% said they thought it was somewhat what positive. Only a third clearly said they wanted the country to remain a member of the single currency bloc, according to the newspaper. A separate survey by pollster Forsa published on Friday showed that 53% of German voters had wanted parliament to back the negotiations, with 42% against. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
A majority of Americans are pointing to Friday's tragedy as a clear call for major reforms in everything, or literally anything at all that might prevent acts of horrifying senseless violence. According to a recent ONN poll, the nation is united in saying that the key to preventing future tragedies is a drastic change in gun control, mental health care, school security, media coverage, violent entertainment, the fragility of the human condition, and really so many other things we probably haven't even thought of. Yet, Jesus. The Randolph Center for Public Health and Safety also released a statement saying, quote, if you look at statistics regarding gun violence in the United States, you'll see the recent shooting is a clear cry for any thing at all to please, please be different. In Washington, lawmakers have reached a bipartisan agreement that the U.S. desperately needs tighter firearm restrictions or looser firearm restrictions or, honestly, whatever option just makes these things stop. Do that one. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It is the live Sunday edition of the program. Of course, you're welcome to join us and bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. Coming up, we will talk about the smoking ban that is being proposed in, of course, New York City. It's either California or New York, usually where these things get started. Um, now, we actually know that in California, there was one city, and I'm sorry, I don't remember which one it was, a couple years ago that banned smoking inside like uh, apartment buildings or duplexes inside homes that were connected in some way, like through an air conditioning system or something like that, uh, or just shared a wall or whatever with another apartment. Now, in New York City, the proposal is to ban smoking from inside homes, period, as I understand it. And with you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Cantwell. You're back. I'm back. Oh, my God. I can hear the tune out already. We're, we're, we're just we're out of business today. This is the <laughs> grand finale of Free Talk Live, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you know, uh, welcome back, Chris. I'm glad to have you back here. And it's not like, you know, we needed to have you into the show. Um, there are other people who've stepped up in your absence. And, you know, we've got the, the week covered. So I did this because I want to have you. Uh, back on the show because I enjoy having you here and I think that you're you're a talented uh, talk show host and I think that you bring something important to the table you bring wit you bring uh, intelligence and you bring some controversy obviously and some people feel very very strongly about you being on this show in fact some people feel strongly about you speaking at conventions and uh, and things like that you recently lost a speaking gig at a couple of different conventions within the last 36 hours or 48 hours or something like that. Yeah, I mean, m part of my routine now is when somebody talks to me about having a speaking gig, I now have to ask them, how are you going to deal with the boycott, the boycott. threats, right? Because yeah. they <laughs> they will come. There's no question about it. Uh, I am not a guy who shies away from topics. As a matter of fact, if it is suggested that I should shy away from the topic, I will do the exact opposite. Sure. And I will go and antagonize people until my dying breath. And so when you do things like that, then people have this nasty habit of picking up the phone and sending nasty emails and making all sorts of threats. So for our listeners who don't know, maybe you're brand new uh, to the show tuning in tonight, Chris Cantwell, he's got a website, ChristopherCantwell.com. You can go there and read uh, many of his writings. They're very entertaining, a lot of them. And there's even video uh, yeah. over there as well. And in fact, you and I just had a video that was released yesterday on the Free Keen YouTube channel, which you've syndicated to your website yep. with you having a conversation. And I was involved as well as JP, one of the local cop block guys here in the area. Uh, it was Chalk the Police Day yesterday. And I want to talk about that a little bit before we get into the smoking ban thing. We, we can do that here in a little bit. But I wanted to talk about that because I think that, you know, I think there's a lot of... Um, a surprising amount of intolerance in the liberty movement for a movement that is so small and really needs all the help that it can get. There's a surprising level of uh, people who are, they're just quick to turn their back on somebody when ultimately, yeah, okay, you've been a jerk to some people. There's no doubt about that. That's kind of your character. You're, you know, you're an a-hole. Right. Um, in fact, that's how you used to market yourself. Though, didn't you change it to abolitionist recently? It's, I changed the headline of the website to uh -huh. abolitionist. The a hole is still in a lot of different places, right. but I figured I'd I'd change it at the top of the website just to sort of lure in unsuspecting victims. So they got through a couple of paragraphs <laughs> before they realized they were talking to an a hole. Right. And uh, so, I mean, you 
I just I guess it's important to, for, to me to sort of explain what's happened here of the last couple of months because you ha- used to be our Wednesday night co-host here on Free Talk Live. There was something that you said online that was very offensive uh, in some ways and could have gotten us in a little bit of trouble as a as a syndicated radio show. So we had to take the action of suspending you from the air. Of course. And I'd also like to point out that Mark Edge, the man who's normally sitting in your seat on Sunday nights, he's actually out right now. There's a an awards dinner being given here in, in New Sucker. Hampshire. He's attending that. <laughs> Um, there was a night when Mark Edge actually said on the air, he used the F word more than once on the air on this radio program. In fact, he called me a, uh, I really can't repeat what he said. B-A-M-F. A, a B-A-M-F. <laughs> yeah, if you, you can figure that out, I think. Um, and he was in quite a mood that particular evening. He even stormed out of uh, the studio after calling me that. And in any other radio job in any other syndicated or local radio job mark edge would be out of a job and there wouldn't be a second chance for mark just because that's radio and that's how it is you know you don't cross that line as a radio host not only do you not only did he cross that line but he crossed it more than once because he crossed it to the point where in radio we have the dump machine as it is called and it builds up a delay and when you hit the dump button, it sort of takes you back to, uh, it jump, dumps out that portion that was spoken, and then it takes you back to live. Right. So he, and then it starts building the dump again once it goes back to live. But if you hit the dump button, and the person who said the F word then continues to say the F word, that's going to go on the radio. You run out of delay, yeah. yeah. I mean, Free Talk Live listeners, if you've ever heard uh, 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 Ian say to a caller, whoa, you can't do that on the air, but you didn't hit a, hear a curse word, that is the dump machine working. That's right. <laughs> and if you're listening on the, the internet, you actually hear all, And if, if somebody called and uses the F word on the air tonight, if you're listening on the internet, you'll hear it because the dump machine isn't hooked. It's hooked up sort of behind that. Right, that's for the broadcast audience. Yeah. So if you're listening to save the podcast, us from the fellas at the freaking FCC. Right, save not us it, to save our stations. Yes, you know, yes they won't indeed. come. They actually can't come after us. They can only come after the people that hold the licenses. And so Mark put our station's licenses in jeopardy on that particular evening, and he only had to take like a night off from the show for that. So my point being that he probably would have been fired from any other radio show. And I think it's important to be forgiving and i think it's important to be understanding and you know try to have a conversation with somebody about why what they did was probably not optimal and you know how they could be better in the future and give somebody a second chance or a third chance or whatever i'm and in fact i've been accused chris and it may be a correct accusation that i'm you know i'm i give too many too many chances i i actually i agree with that assessment i mean what you start sort of started off this thing was is that the liberty movement was quick to turn their backs on people. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I, I, I disagree with your assessment. I actually think that they are entirely too accepting. I think that we have a, a massive problem with a leftist infiltration of the libertarian movement. I think these people should be chased out in fear of their lives with the utmost of hostilities. And uh, and it's unfortunate to me that people are unwilling to do that. People just have this idea that we need to grow our numbers, and that's so desperately need to, to, to be done. And I think that the reason, uh, uh, aside from my delivery methods, I think that part of the reason that so people are so hostile to me is because I am hostile to that. There has been a concerted effort to grow the numbers of the libertarian movement by going out and reaching out to leftists, to social justice warriors, to people who are absolutely not in tune with uh, you know Rothbardian anarcho-capitalism by any stretch of the imagination. Well, let's be clear. I mean, there's certainly plenty of conservative infiltration into the liberty movement as well, and they're bringing you know some less than liberty-friendly ideas to the table also. I mean, if you look at the Libertarian Party, I don't know if you've had much inter- uh, interaction with them, but, I mean, come on, Bob Barr, that guy's no libertarian, but yet they nominated him as their libertarian presidential candidate. The Libertarian Party presidential candidate should be as pure of a libertarian as you can get. Somebody who really understands principle, you know, the principle that as a libertarian, for those that don't know, you don't support or advocate the initiation of force, aggressive force, to achieve political or social goals. Certainly. Bob Barr is a Republican. And in point of fact, you know, to prove it, he quit the Libertarian Party and is now back to being a Republican well, again. Well, of course. And I so, mean, this problem goes back— I think infiltration's back. 
on both sides. Yeah, right? no, no question about it. And it's only going to get worse with time. As libertarians become a demographic that politicians and businesses want to cater markets and, and votes to, if people want to solicit donations and volunteers from us, then they will increasingly try to say, hey, I'm one of you guys. I'm one of you. I'm right. one of you. And they will come and they will they will smear the, uh, the philosophical grounding of this entire thing all over the place. And it has to be stood against. It absolutely has to be stood against. Now, to the, to the question of having concern, Conservatives come in here and 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 try to um, you know infiltrate. I find that it's at the very least, I would say it's less harmful, right? I would say that there's, I don't know. I would say that most of the the conservative libertarians I know, and I and I will put on that list names like Tom Woods and Ron Paul are incredibly valuable assets to this movement. Mm -hmm. You look at what uh, right wing alliances can can be, uh, the, what libertarians can thank right wing alliances for. You've got Ron Paul, Murray Rothbard, you've got Walter Block, you've got Tom Woods. Who do we thank for the left? I don't know. Brad Spangler. <laughs> Stand by. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts as well here. And I see where you're coming from. I guess I meant turning their backs on principle. Libertarians. People yeah, that's a problem. understand the ideas of freedom and not being forgiving. More on the way. 855, 450 free. There's more coming up. We'll talk about the smoking ban as well tonight here on Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Many are in disbelief today after word of shocking allegations against a Minnesota-based talk syndication company known as GCN. It's claimed that they're the fourth largest talk syndication company in the U.S., making it even more scandalous that they've been accused of helping business owners expose themselves on a massive scale. Let's go live to Tom for more on this story. It's being called the greatest exposure of our lifetime, while other business owners are beginning to step forward claiming they, too, exposed themselves <gasps> with the help of GCN. It's true. They're all guilty. Every last one of them. GCN helped me get the exposure my company needed, and just think, that was years ago. Today, GCN has like 700 affiliate stations and over 6 million downloads from iTunes and their website every month. Imagine the exposure your company can get. Expose your business to the masses. Email advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. GCN. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm.
New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We are going to discuss the proposed smoking ban in New York City. That's actually where Chris is sort of from originally, Long Island, I guess. Yeah, yeah I'm from Long Island. So, uh, yeah, you can share your thoughts with us here. And uh, we were talking about the liberty movement and the the difficulty that people have with, with in some cases, with being forgiving towards folks. And, you know... We're neighbors, Chris. I mean, you actually used to live directly across the street, but you still live here in Keene, and so I guess technically you're still a neighbor in that way. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like... Fellow Keeniacs. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I've been getting this critique of, well, Ian, you don't care about quality. All you care is about quantity of activists. As long as someone is an activist for liberty, then you'll accept any faults uh, that that individual has. And that's certainly... Not true. I mean, if somebody is a rapist or a murderer or something like that, then I would not be very accepting. Right. We we uh, haven't had to that. deal with a great deal of that, thankfully. Yeah, thank but, goodness. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I am pretty tolerant of folks because human beings aren't perfect people. Uh, you know, we're not perfect creatures. There are faults that people have by virtue of the fact that they're human. I mean, that's just how it is. And so can I get along with somebody despite their faults? Can we have a productive relationship as activists and, and friends uh, despite whatever issues somebody might have personally? I say yes. And I think that people who are of a liberty mindset who are coming here to New Hampshire deserve to have second chances and tolerance uh, shown towards them. And I don't see a lot of that being given towards you, Chris. And, you know, I guess the argument from one of your detractors would be that, well, you've earned it and you're a jerk. And so therefore people should treat you like garbage. Um, and I feel like that that wouldn't have helped you uh, ultimately it, uh, if I had treated you in the way that others would like me to. Right, because if I were to do what others would suggest, then I would have to shut you out of my life. Um, because you know, if, if I don't, you know, I I basically been taking a lot of s because of you, and you're a tough friend to have. But you're a very, in my opinion, loyal friend. You are a good person. I've seen, you know, that you're a good person. I believe that about you, and. Uh, I don't know. I, mean, I feel like I'm rambling here. But, you are a little bit, yeah. and, and it's okay, and, and, I'm, and I'm starting to blush. But yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate it. And look, I, I am a person who, um, if if people are good to me, I'm good to them, right? And that's, I've seen that's, that. That's the yeah. way I am with the world. Now, I have a certain expectation that because of my ideas and the things that I talk about, people are not going to be good to me, mm -hmm. right? And I expect that. That's part of the, the, the game that I'm in, and I'm just completely accepting of that right so if people want to treat me like dirt i'm more than happy to play that game with them i've had people treat me like dirt and i've never been bad to them either like they don't even well, because of my girlfriend or whatever you know it, what, whatever the case may be I, I i've said before look a lot of the stuff that comes against us people will assign all sorts of different causes to it but it's politics right they are against us for our politics and for that they will treat us badly and they will assign I mean, within other, the other blames movement. to it well of course and within yeah. the liberty movement there's right. a lot of disagreement with our politics which is part of what i've been complaining about this is what i rail about weekly on radical agenda That's is your mostly podcast. other libertarians yeah it's mostly other libertarians or purported libertarians who are anything but it's complete nonsense what goes on in this movement that most of the, the vast majority of the people that i run into who purport to be libertarians this this is new hampshire the free state project you know whatever you want to call it uh uh is ground zero it's the largest polit libertarian political migration on planet earth so we're yeah. we're drop dead in the middle of this thing and i am surrounded by liberals 
and I'm angry about that, and I'm hostile towards these people. They don't, they don't, they are not uh, advancing the same cause as I am, and so I treat them with hostility, and then oh. they come after me, and I'm and I'm more than happy to treat them the same way. So that's where you and I differ, right? I mean, I'm not hostile towards people. I want to be welcoming and understanding. You're not and- hostile towards people, and they're yeah. hostile towards you anyway. And what's that tell that's you? That's true. That's true. Well, some of them are. But I, I feel like, you know, maybe if we're, you know, you're nice to people, then they might come in your direction if you communicate with them. And how know. much evidence do you need that that's not the case? In some cases, it's not the case. We just had an issue today, actually, with a guy in the local community who's been involved with the, the activists, the liberty activists here in the Keene area. He's not a free stater. He's actually from New York as well. And uh, he's also not a libertarian, and he was recently removed from the local one of the local activist groups here in town uh, because he has been around for a year and still supports a smoking ban and, and now has announced that he's supporting Bernie Sanders and further supports a minimum wage. And, you know, these are some pretty basic concepts about liberty, like it's your body. You should be free to do with it as you choose, as far as the smoking ban is concerned. Uh, and then it's your business. You should be able to pay people as you agree with those people to pay them. I mean, that's you know, basic economic and personal freedom issues here. So it's not that I feel like people should be rude to this individual uh, or that uh, this individual should be shut out completely. It's just that they don't belong in a particular club that has a certain uh, requirement for membership. And one of those requirements is that you understand and accept and advocate the ideas of liberty. So I don't want to shut people out completely because I don't think that helps them learn. I don't want to be hostile towards them because I don't think that helps them, you know, see value in the viewpoint that I might be promoting. So for for that particular individual, he's a guy who basically has some ideas that are at odds with what we're doing. And as but he's, he's, my, my, my advocacy for him is that, you know, look, let him hang around, right? Yeah. Let him be somebody's guest. Let him learn something. You know, maybe he picks up a Rothbard book or something so, at some point. But why not be hostile towards him? I because mean, doesn't he's he meet not, the qualifications of uh, the reason the, the reason I'm not is because he doesn't purport to be a libertarian and he doesn't purport, ah. he does not purport smoking bans Bernie standards and minimum wage to be libertarian issues, right? I see what you're saying. The, the people, you're hostile towards the people who are sort of cloaking themselves as libertarians. The people who are trying to paint their leftist, psychopathic agenda as libertarian philosophy are enemies of the human race as far as I'm concerned, and those people I treat with the utmost of hostility. These social justice warrior fanatics who come in here and try to p- p- portray uh, uh, libertarianism as some egalitarian agenda are 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 enemies of Murray Rothbard and I and I will I will fight them to my dying breath as 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 vigorously as I will fight against the state. Our toll free number is tonight 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733. So, you were suspended for a couple of it seems like two months uh, or close darn close to it because it was well before the Porcupine Freedom Festival it was like a good month before the Porcupine Freedom Festival and it's about been a month since then. Something like that, yeah. So, it's been a couple of months. I felt like that's more than enough. And uh, and so welcome back. You're kind of going to be back on as maybe a fill-in uh, guest host because we've already sort of filled your spot on Wednesdays. And I don't want to boot somebody else out and be like, oh, Cantwell's back. So you won't be heard regularly on a, a you know, certain daily basis, but you're back. So welcome back. Good to be back. Let's talk about smoking, shall we? Because uh, there's a proposal on the table in New York City, where you're pretty much from, that it's already a pretty restricted place, right? Like what... The last time you were in New York City, what were the smoking rules that you understood? I mean, they they got to a point where it's, you know, they they banned smoking indoors and basically, you know, all public businesses and that sort of thing, you know, quite some time ago. I think there was an exception for like cigar bars or, you know, hookah. Aren't the, isn't smoking also banned from like doorways and windows? Yeah, and like 50 certain, feet or certain X public of feet? parks and and that sort of thing. It's been banned in a lot of different places, and they added uh, electronic cigarettes to their smoking ban as well. That's and, fairly recent, right? Yeah, and now my understanding is Ridiculous. they've gone and taken this another step further. It's complete lunacy. The there's a proposal on the table, at least. I don't know if it has been uh, approved at this point. We'll tell you more about that. Uh, 855 450 free smoking ban indoors. Is it coming soon to New York City? Maybe coming soon to a city near you if they do it in New York. It's Free Talk Live. 
We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Berkey guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey system. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting goberkey.com or call me, the Berkey guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends, share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. We're back now with more Free Talk Live on this live Sunday edition of the program. Another proposed extension of the smoking ban. It's Probably going to get even worse in New York City. And you knew it could get worse because they hadn't yet banned it from your house. But that may be coming. We'll tell you more about that coming up here in a moment. Then, uh, also, I guess in a related story, apparently there's other news about how uh, there already was an, another shocking uh, smoking ban from the city streets of New York City that you didn't even know about, Chris, that had happened last year. So uh, we'll get into that here in a moment. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. We've got Skype as well, and tomorrow night we're going to do an experimental edition of Free Talk Live where we will only be taking Skype calls. 
So if you want to participate, make sure you got Skype installed on your smartphone, tablet, or your PC or Mac or Linux. This is obviously the invisible hand of the market causing poor people to suffer, and as a libertarian, I endorse it. I think that plenty of poor people have smartphones, Chris. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that, but uh, you know, there's there's hobos that have smartphones because <laughs> they don't have to pay rent. Uh, so, hey, you know what? Speaking of getting on the internet, on your smartphone or laptop or whatever, you need to protect yourself because your internet service provider is probably spying on you. They're probably uh, logging all the websites you visit, all the search terms that you enter, maybe keeping those logs for several years in some cases, and then doing who knows what with them, turning them over to the government, selling them to corporations, mining them for your you know, personal information and data, you can stop that from happening with ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They've got software for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and Linux. You just go download. It's free to get started. they got a free account. Uh, you can test it out. ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade, however, to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites, you can do that with code FTL50, FTL like Free Talk Live, and 50 as in... 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy their annual account, which, by the way, locks in that price for the lifetime of your account. So that's awesome. It's also a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but your privacy. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go to the phones to the fun. Dave listening in North Carolina to WSIC. Hello, Dave. Hey. Hey, Dave, go I ahead. I thought I'd discuss the cigarette issue because I was born and raised in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. All right. That's, that's not hard, too hard to figure what our primary earning capacity was in that city because yep. I worked in tobacco from the time I was seven years old. I would pick tobacco. I would haul tobacco. I would string it. I would hang it. I would cure it. Uh you know, that's just what we did. That was our, our backbone of our economy here, other than textiles. And shortly after the textiles went to China and Japan and places like that, uh, then they started cranking down on tobacco companies. And now I'm seeing cigarettes from the United Arab Emirates and Korea being sold here in the United States. Now, if they can manufacture those cigarettes so far away, ship them here, pay the taxes, and still make a profit, how are we benefiting from that? Well, we're certainly not benefiting from it, right? I mean, it's a disaster trying to go out and, you know, over-regulate industries to the, to the point that they can't even operate where it makes more sense to ship something from the other side of the planet mm. to here than to take something from North Carolina is obviously uh, something very, very wrong with your economic policies. Well, yeah, I See, the point is it, it devastated a lot of people here who grew up uh, through generations of tobacco growers back from the settlers' days. I'm going to take the you know, devil's advocate first? position here for you, I'm Dave. Glad you did. This isn't my uh, viewpoint, okay? I'm just being the devil's advocate. Shouldn't you be feeling guilty, Dave, for being seven years old and going around picking tobacco? I mean, you've contributed to the deaths of countless Americans and people around the world. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, it taught me a whole lot about logic because they paid us $5 a day to work 12 hours. Now, that's child labor abuse probably, but it taught me something very great about logic because we got $5 a day, plus we got fed breakfast and we got fed lunch. And then at the end of the day, they told us that we could take home all the watermelons we could carry. Now, you're a logical individual, although you're a libertarian, how many uh, watermelons, once you've got one under each arm, can you pick up? Not very many. Now, why were there so many oh, watermelons on a tobacco plantation? Oh, they grew all kinds of food. Uh, uh, corn, cucumbers, everything. Okay. Tobacco wasn't the only commodity. Gotcha. But the point is... And how old were you? Seven? So you were seven years old? Yeah, when I started. I could just imagine this seven-year-old trying to lug like five watermelons <laughs> on his back and just... <laughs> <laughs> You can't pick up that third one. That's farmer's yeah. logic. Yeah. But you don't know, you so feel guilty? I mean, all these here. people smoking the product that you helped bring to their uh, to their lungs, possibly resulting in emphysema and, you know, early death. Don't you feel guilty about that? 
No, I got COPD myself, and it was my choice to start smoking. I didn't start smoking until I was uh, 18, 17 years old, something like that. Interesting. But I worked in tobacco. Yeah. You know, and uh, the thing was uh, that everybody in my neighborhood worked at R.J. Reynolds, except my dad, who worked at Western Electric or Bell Labs. And uh, it was kind of frowned upon if you did not buy some kind of R.J. Reynolds product because that was our primary commodity in Western mm-hmm. Salem. A lot, of, a lot of peer pressure there to, to, to uh, you know, buy them products. Uh, when I, I started well, it's, smoking... It's like- I started smoking when I was like 13 years old, okay. and you know, Dad smoked, and I used to swipe Dad's cigarettes. And then this was like this big problem, you know. And then, uh, you know, I ended up uh, eventually buying my own packs and that sort of thing. And I, I, I remember realizing that I was addicted to nicotine. And it when was, did you realize that? I, I by the time I was 14. Okay. And it was it was a, a unique feeling that I was like, oh wait a second, I'm having this really uncomfortable feeling. Oh, it goes away when I smoke, mm. and it's a thing that I still struggle with today. You're I've holding got, a, yeah, anybody who's watching the studio camera sees me with my vaporizer here, right? And you know, I started the the vaporizer like three years ago, but up until then, I was a I was a hardcore chain smoker i would just, <laughs> I imagine because you're always on that thing <laughs> yeah i was smoking like two cartons a week in newport 100s and it was wow. it was a miserable thing that like i would wake up coughing every uh, morning you know I'm, I'm certainly no athlete today but back then just to walk up the stairs was a crisis uh oh, you know man. so i mean uh you know tobacco is certainly not something that i would encourage anybody to get into these days it's it's a, it's not a it's not a good product i even see people are like i think i'm gonna try the e-cigarette and they're not smokers and i just want to smack their head <laughs> off their neck i'm like are you a moron you don't want a nicotine habit but uh you know but as, as the gentleman said you know it's a, it's a choice that people make yes and, and that's to, the right answer and to go and you know well, to, to go and me, condemn people like and, and ruin industries because uh you don't like another person person's personal choices is a is a horrific thing to do well let me make one statement in closing yes sir i lived in detroit also for 13 years and uh you know if you lived in western Salem, north carolina and didn't use their product it was the same as when i lived in detroit from 77 to uh oh a little bit past uh 90 if you didn't drive an american car you know, I mean, if you were driving a Toyota in Detroit, you were frowned on. Interesting. You know, because you weren't supporting the local economy. Well, they can't so, say that uh, anymore because we've all been compelled to pay for GM. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, I thought it was interesting well, that, you know, you got this job at such a young age and that, you know, yes, it's child labor. But I think child labor working as a child builds a lot of good skills early on and helps people. I mean, don't you feel like you're better? you're a better person because you were working at a young age? Well, I've I've never stopped working from the time I was seven years old until I was 62. And uh, finally, my doctor says, you've pretty much worn yourself out. Don't you think it's time to quit? Right on. I became a biochemist biochemist treating drinking water for the rest of my life once I graduated high school. Well, that still sounds like work, uh, right? Well, he said when he graduated high school, he did that until he was about 62, it sounds like. Oh, I see. And that's that's good. I mean, you know, I have a similar story. I mean, I was working on my dad's landscaping truck when I was very young, and, you know, it taught me, yeah, work. Same thing with my my life. I was working in my mom's thrift store at a very, very young age. Thank you, Dave, for your call tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Whether you want to talk about... The smoking bans, tobacco, working as a child. Tell your story here. 855-453. We're here live on Sunday night. This is Free Talk Live. We're coming up. Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust Listen Clear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And now we're extending our in-home trial to let you try Listen Clear risk-free for a full 45 days. With free shipping, we'll even give you free batteries for life. Call now, 1-800-956-9829. Listen Clear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. 
Call for your extended 45-day in-home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now. 1-800-956-9829. That's 1-800-956-9829. 1-800-956-9829. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. CEO Jeff Potkel went berserk earlier this morning, becoming drenched in his own blood and the blood of several employees as he viciously demanded the staff produce more web video content or he would quote f***ing kill them all. We need more videos! Videos with bands! Random videos! Funny videos! I want a video with a celebrity! I don't give a sh which one! You think this is funny? <laughs> I'll show you funny! <laughs> He threw our office manager's body against the door and then told us that nobody could leave unless we came up with three original video ideas. Then he made us watch as he bit his own tongue in half. People don't want to read. They want videos. They want to sit at work and watch videos. Videos need to go viral. 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 Is the Onion News Network. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday edition of the program. You can dial in toll free here to join us. Talk about the smoking ban that is being, well, proposed to be expanded in New York City. The toll free number is 855 450 free. And with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian and Cantwell. Also, uh, let's see, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. There are lots of features on our site. We've also got the webcam, which is built into the same page as our chat rooms. So you can watch and you can listen and chat with other Free Talk Live listeners at the same time, all for free. Just go to cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam freetalklive.com the story from the daily caller it's in a bunch of different places new york post etc dailycaller.com just six months after claiming his family doesn't smoke pot inside the mayor's mansion democratic new york city mayor bill de blasio is going after residents who smoke tobacco in their own homes quote the health department is encouraging efforts for voluntary smoke-free housing initiatives, the mayor's office told the Daily Caller News Foundation in a prepared statement saying, quote, everyone benefits from smoke-free housing. Residents enjoy breathing cleaner, healthier air in their homes and in common areas, while owners see reductions in property damage and turnover costs, unquote. 
Though tobacco is a legal substance as opposed to marijuana, the mayor has sought to stop its use in as many areas around the city as possible. The latest plan is to get landlords and developers to voluntarily ban smoking in their resident buildings. The administration will select four advocacy groups who will be in charge of persuading property owners to put the bans on their residents. This is almost worse than passing a law. They're going to go and bribe some uh, some advocacy groups to go and lean on landlords and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm Why is that worse? I'm saying almost. It's not okay. It's not quite, but it's it's it makes me angrier for some reason, right? At least there's like <laughs> like there's a legislative process and you could say like there's some theory by which the city council is elected and represents the people's will. And then they go, like, I, of course, it's think that's complete but, nonsense. Yeah. But at least there's that theory behind that, okay. right? This is this bureaucrat going out and saying, well, I've got a, a couple of bucks to throw around. I've got an aesthetic preference. So I'm going to go get these these hypocrite, uh, you know, d- d- nanny state losers to go around and lean on landlords right Mm -hmm. and they're probably going to give them tax incentives and stupid nonsense things for them to go around and be like well you know uh, if uh, i hate to see something happen to your business right i mean (laughs) this is this is literally what it comes down to and they're going to go and do these pressure groups i hate them yeah when the government comes around and asks for voluntary compliance to some new program look out because they're just testing the waters to see what will happen, in my opinion, what will happen if they go ahead and make it mandatory. Well, exactly. I mean, you started to see, I mean, before they started banning smoking in restaurants and that sort of thing, I mean, you sort of sto- you started to see restaurants sort of do that, right? Um, in New York, they had uh, they had com- they had compelled you to have, you know, a, a, if you were going to have people smoke in your restaurant, you had to have a smoking section and a non-smoking section. Mm-hmm. And the smoking section had to have all of this equipment, all this air filter equipment put in. People spent tens of thousands of dollars, and not too long after that they you know and then people started being like i don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars on equipment to have my uh, to let people smoke in my restaurant scroll them and they and they just said no smoking in the restaurant right mm. and then uh what did they do they said okay all you people who pay tens of thousands of dollars to have all this air filter equipment now put into useless. your restaurant now you wasted all that money because we're going to ban smoking in all the restaurants anyway these groups that they're going to be these four advocacy groups will be getting paid nine thousand dollars a piece apparently uh, the plans to make the city more healthy and smoke-free comes from just six months after de Blasio was accused and admitted to smoking marijuana. If the New York City government wants people to be more healthy, maybe they should stop gunning people down in the streets. <laughs> when asked in January by the D.C., the mayor denied that his wife, Sh- Sherlane McRae, or himself, have ever smoked the illegal drug inside Gracie Mansion, a taxpayer-funded home for the mayor. He did admit, however, to smoking pot back in his college years. The mayor said to laughter, No, (laughs) I haven't smoked marijuana since I was at NYU. Blasio, however. But he, but he feels compelled to point out that the marijuana is not being smoked inside the mayor's inside. mansion, which implies that there's marijuana being smoked outside of the mansion. It certainly does imply that. And Blasio, however, did not elaborate on the last time his wife has smoked marijuana. The denial has been met with skepticism with some in media seeking to find people who've smoked with the mayor in recent years and others asking for him to resign. The I don't ref- I don't believe that de Blasio's wife is smoking marijuana. Why not? I don't know a lot of crackheads who smoke marijuana. They spend all their money on crack. I'm just assuming she's de Blasio's <laughs> wife, right? I mean, she's got to be. There's something wrong with the woman, right? Right, walking around with meth mouth. The revelation has even been used by opponents in his ongoing dispute with law enforcement. Former NYPD detective Bo Deedle notes it may be true the couple didn't smoke inside the mansion. Deedle told DC the DC at the time, quote, what about in the backyard when he built the wall higher? A little birdie tweeted in my ear. Someone from law enforcement told me that his wife is smoking pot. It's not the end of the world, the cop said. He continued to say, my belief is... It's not the end of the world for the mayor's wife. If somebody in the NYPD catches a hold of some poor SOB on the streets of New York, though, it is. It's going to make life more difficult on him. Although, doesn't New York City have uh, some level of decriminalization for cannabis? I don't know exactly how. I think that you can have some amount without going straight directly to jail. Okay. But I mean, even even at that, like even if you get charged with like an A misdemeanor in New York, the jails are a revolving door there. They got too many people going in all the time. So I mean, look, you could you could you could do drugs in New York uh, New York for a long time and get caught a whole bunch of times and not spend a whole lot of time in jail uh, because they just the jails are always packed and they got to make room for people. 
So obviously this guy is a hypocrite. Uh, but going on here, the mayor's office decide, or declined to comment on de Blasio's use of the drug. Whether he has smoked pot since college or not, the mayor seems destined to stop others from smoking tobacco. The plan to stop smoking at private residence or residences is just the latest in a long health crusade, starting with Mayor Michael Bloomberg. As the New York affiliate of NBC News reports, between the two mayors, the city has banned smoking at bars, restaurants, and even on city streets and other public locations. With difficulty passing his bans through the law, de Blasio has found legal workarounds to advance his agenda. He said at a press conference in October, quote, Ladies and gentlemen, it is with that definition I am banning cigarette, cigar, and pipe smoking on city streets in all five boroughs. Secondhand smoke is litter, make no mistake. If I could declare cigarettes illegal, I would, but I can take steps to make sure no one on city streets has to see or breathe in their poisonous fumes. And you looked into this in further detail, Chris, and you found out that he has basically declared that the uh, ashes, essentially, or the smoke or whatever that's coming the, off the, the cigarette. The smoke is litter. That's what he's saying. He's applying the littering ordinance right. to smoking. This is not an act of the city council where they came together and said, it's now illegal to, to smoke on the streets of New York. This bureaucrat, this executive scumbag turned around and was just like, you know what? I think smoke is litter. So, NYPD, you see somebody smoking, give them a littering ticket. It's ridiculous, but that is, I guess, his purview as the executive, right? I mean, he's the no, head of the executive not. branch. No, it's not. That's nonsense. The city council passed an ordinance against littering, throwing garbage on the city streets. Mm-hmm. It's a completely different thing. But he's saying from- ashes are garbage. I mean, it's unwanted refuse that's uh, that's hitting the streets. I mean, while That's we're like at it- saying chalk is graffiti. That's true. While we're at it, let's just ban humans because they're constantly littering with dead skin cells going all over the place. I mean, what do you think dust is? Oh, right? yeah, you're creating dust. Dust mites and and uh, putting carbon dioxide all over the place <laughs> and all of this terrible nonsense. Yeah, I mean, these guys, uh, De Blasio came in there after Bloomberg, and you know Bloomberg, don't get me wrong, was a maniac, right? Yeah, sure. And some people were like, okay, you know, at least he's not trying to ban sodas, right? But no, and he's like, no, smoke is litter, nonsense. Wait, wasn't it Bloomberg who banned the sodas? Bloomberg banned the sodas, right. and then and then the so the court, uh, the state court said, no, you're a moron. Oh, you they can't kicked do that, that back in his face. Oh yeah, they were like, you can't That's do good. that, you idiots. <laughs> because they didn't have the they didn't have the regulatory authority to even do it. What it was what it was. It, well, that's it, the thing. The governments will do this, and it's not just a New York City thing. They did this. They did this here in Keene, New Hampshire, where even if it's illegal, they'll do it anyway, and then hope they don't get called on it. In the case of the smoke or the uh, the, the soda thing, they got called on it. Right. But if a government passes an illegal law or ordinance and nobody ever challenges it, then it's legal because. It's just sitting there, and it's being enforced, and no one has said, hey, you should not do that. It's unconstitutional or whatever. So unfortunately, whenever they do these illegal things, then the people who care about those matters have to spend thousands, tens upon thousands of dollars to go to court, pay for attorneys just to try to get this illegal ordinance overturned. It's absolutely ridiculous. Right. They're like, they're like disobedient children and drug addicts. They're just like, let me see what I can get away with today. That's all it is. That's all it is. The, they did it here in Keene for the synthetic drug ban. They banned synthetic drugs in Keene, and during the conversation they actually had in the council chambers, they were given the legal advice that this would probably not hold up in court. They, they were, were like, we'll take that. our chances. That's exactly what they did. Oh, yeah, it's illegal? Well, let's just see what happens. Well, we've got unlimited funds for lawyers, right. no problem. All right, there's more on the way here. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts. The smoking ban. Are you ready to see smoking banned? From inside people's homes. That's the proposal on the table in New York City. What do you think? It's Free Talk Live. Hour two's coming up. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. They say life is about choices. So let me introduce you to one of the best choices you can make in life. Granger Choice. The Granger Choice product line has just about everything we need to keep this place running. From batteries to V-belts, safety to sump pumps, and with Granger Choice, we can trust that every product is dependable and cost-effective. When it comes to making life choices, 
Here's a great one. Granger Choice. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash choice or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, July 19th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,134 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $275. Antiwar.com reports addressing the possibility of Congress blocking the Iran nuclear deal with the P5 plus one. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest warned that such a move would isolate the United States internationally and would render U.S. sanctions against Iran, many of which are supposed to be lifted by the deal, effectively unenforceable. Earnest went on to say that the sanctions were what brought Iran to the table to negotiate in the first place, and if the U.S. Congress kills the deal, they would get all the benefits of the deal without having to give up anything. The argument makes some sense as the U.S. sanctions were grudgingly supported internationally on the idea that it would lead to a deal like the one finally reached. If the U.S. reneged on the internationally backed deal after finally getting it done, many nations would probably balk at letting the U.S. sanctions return unchallenged. At any rate, this is seen as extremely unlikely as there would need to be a supermajority in both houses of Congress to block the deal, and despite some claims to the contrary from hawks and a lot of money being being poured into the campaign by the Israeli lobby, that's likely an unattainable number for congressmen to sway. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports seven employees of the maximum security prison where Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was being held have been charged in his escape. Mexico's attorney general said Friday that the prison workers will be jailed in the state of Guanajuato as the investigation continues. Officials did not release the names of the suspects or their role in the prison. Federal sources told Mexican Daily Reforma seven men and two women who worked security at the prison helped Guzman escape on July 12th. Earlier in the week, Mexican officials said it took guards 18 minutes to respond to Guzman's cell the night he escaped. Investigators are interviewing dozens of others who may have aided in Guzman's escape. Among them is prison director Valentin Cardenas. Interior Minister Miguel Angel Osorio Chong said at a news conference, this is part of what the Attorney General's office is looking at if the protocols were fulfilled in the correct times. Guzman was last seen at the Altaplano Federal Prison in the town of Alma Loyo de Juarez in the state of Mexico at 8.52 p.m. on July 12th. He escaped through a mile-long tunnel in a shower area shielded by a short wall for privacy. Closed-circuit video shows him entering the shower area twice fully clothed and bending down. The second time, he never resurfaced. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports more than half of Germans think the planned deal with Greece is bad and many have preferred that the crisis-stricken country left the Eurozone rather than getting the chance for further aid, according to an opinion poll. Lawmakers in Germany, the biggest contributor to Eurozone bailouts, on Friday gave their go-ahead for the currency bloc to negotiate a third bailout for Greece that could total 86 billion euros over three years. In the YouGov survey seen by German newspaper Welt am Sonntag, 56% of respondents said they thought the plan for such a deal with Greece was bad, with just over one-fifth of those saying it was very bad. Only 2% deemed it to be positive, while another 27% said they thought it was somewhat positive. Only a third clearly said they wanted the country to remain a member of the single currency bloc, according to the newspaper. A separate survey by pollster Forsa published on Friday showed that 53% of German voters had wanted parliament to back the negotiations, with 42% against. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Amid the catastrophic economic crisis spurred by Tuesday's release of This Christmas, the new holiday-themed album by John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, economic experts told reporters today the Christmas CD has quickly plunged the nation into a double-dip recession. When investors learned that one-time screen couple John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John had reunited after 35 years for an album of timeless Christmas classics, investors had no choice but to pull money from markets immediately. We were already on shaky ground with the collapse of the U.S. subprime mortgage market and the reversal financial crisis in Europe, but consumer confidence plummeted after Americans saw the new album with a picture of Travolta and Olivia Newton-John holding cups of hot cocoa. We believe that when other countries find out the album features a Christmas song that pays tribute to summer nights, we could be looking at a global contagion. This is the blackest day on Wall Street in two decades. This is the Onion News Network. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Of course, you're welcome to join us here. We've been talking about the proposed smoking ban indoors in New York City. Now, to be fair, they're not proposing the ban officially. But what they are doing is encouraging and persuading homeowners and or not just home not homeowners but like apartment building owners and you know people that own multitudes of places to create a uh, a no smoking policy for they're, their they're, residential they're subsidizing place. these these stupid pressure groups yes. to go out and lean on the landlords and that's and that's and it's despicable i don't look uh people are paying taxes in new york city and they there's Look, there's a theory behind taxes that, you know, you're paying for certain things to be done, right? And one of those things is not to go out and give money to these these advocacy groups who go out and do stuff that has nothing to do with the laws of that city. It's complete nonsense. It's just you're going to go give money. I mean, why are you go give money to some other group, right? Like any other cause, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's, this is not a Picking charitable. One over another, yeah. This is not a charitable organization, ladies and gentlemen. It's the city of New York. People are having money taken from them without their consent, under threat of incarceration and death. And then you're like, well, I've got this aesthetic preference, so I think I'll just go hand out, what did he say, seven different groups, 9000 bucks at a clip or something like this, for you to go out and go give landlords a hard time? Go screw yourself. So that's the proposal that's it's happening. That's what's happening in New York City. They also apparently banned smoking on the city streets, and that was last year, calling it litter. So the city aldermen, I believe is what they're called there, did not pass this. It was the mayor himself who made the executive proclamation that he will be instructing the police to consider ashes from a cigarette or the smoke coming from a cigarette as to be litter. And so, therefore, that people should be ticketed for that. I wonder what the level of enforcement has been on that. I mean, are, are people receiving tickets left and right in New York City for that kind of thing? I was there in June and... 
I don't recall seeing people smoking on the streets, but I, you know, I wasn't really looking for it, and nor would I have thought it to be unusual had I come across it. So I can't people, say for sure. People are definitely smoking on the streets of New York and completely ignoring the mm-hmm. law. And it's just if you get caught, you, you get, get caught. caught. I mean, people you see people walking down the street with a beer and a bag and that sort of thing. And, right. You know, it's common enough, and it's just do you run into a cop or not? You yeah. know, New York City is one of these places that while they have some of the most voluminous law books in, in the planet. Uh, it's simultaneously one of the freest places on the planet because there is just there's no way you you could possibly enforce the laws, right? I mean, you've got even though the the NYPD is like the world's seventh largest army according to Bloomberg, mm-hmm. uh, it's still there's just so many people there. There's so much stuff going on that you couldn't possibly you know go out and and uh, reliably enforce the edicts of the New York City Council. Sure, which there's be just not enough cops, right? And they've got, you know, the, the you know, Bloomberg soda ban was, again, not a thing that the city council did. This is his, you know, health board creates a regulation, right? And they do all of these things. And it's like you've got the laws that the New York City Council passes, and then they create these bureaucracies, which, you know, they just call them regulations. But these things have force of law behind them, and it's completely ridiculous. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We'll go to Skype first with Uber George on the line. George, where are you at tonight? Uh, right now in Maryland at the moment. Excellent. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, right now, um, I just called because I just found out that Mark Emery, apparently, uh, you know, the Prince of Pot doesn't want cancer to be cured. What? Why would he say something like that? Well, basically, uh, it was on a Facebook post here to a friend of mine who supported him for 10 years, and she worked with the Can- Canadian Parliament to help get her uh, get him out of prison, and her her mom has cancer. And she was, you know, saying that how bad it was, and she just wants it to be cured. And then Mark Emery um, posted a, a comment on her her post saying, and I quote, cancer should not be cured. We cannot have people living extended lives when young people are taxed exorbitantly to pay for selfish aging generation that wants to live forever. Older hmm. people should accept their mortality and after a certain age, stop sucking up a fortune in tax money so they can live a few years longer. It's an interesting perspective. i got to say, I've never heard that one. And and this is exactly what happens when you have tax policy like we have. We're like, wait, because of taxes, kill old people with cancer, right? (laughs) Like, that's the ultimate conclusion of, like, progressive taxation and, you know, the Social Security system. is like, look, old people, we love you, it's been real, but now you've got to die because you're expensive. Wow. It's yeah, pretty amazing. much. I mean, and, and the thing of it is, because we can't. I'm sorry, but because we can't possibly create, we can't possibly change the tax system, right? We can't change the tax system to make old people not a burden on the society. Well, I think Mark Emery would support that. I mean, I, we've had Mark on the show, the Prince of Pot. He's the publisher of Cannabis Culture Magazine, longtime Ron Paul supporter. Uh, used a lot of the money that he made from selling marijuana seeds to actually fund many of the efforts in Canada and the United States to legalize and decriminalize cannabis. So, I mean, there's no doubt that he's a very liberty-minded person, and I think that you know, he, I think he's just saying that out of frustration for the fact that, well, obviously, liberty has certainly not taken hold, and meanwhile, there's all kinds of costs going to taking care of these elderly folks, and it seems pretty cold uh, as far as what he's saying there. But I, I guess I understand where he's coming from. It, but yeah, just but I mean that's pretty dark bitter. And I can just only yeah. you know imagine. Well, I have, imagine if you spend, spend five, five years in prison. federal prison, you could come yeah. out kind of bitter, you know, having yeah. gone to prison yeah, yeah. for selling seeds. I don't know uh, how familiar our listeners are with Mark's story, but you know he was called the Prince of Pot. The DEA had him on their number one most wanted uh, list. And like he was the top most wanted guy for the DEA, and that's because he's a political activist. Because not only was he selling, because there's a billion people selling seeds on the internet, um, so he's just one of them. But he was someone who was taking his profits from selling marijuana seeds and rolling them into the marijuana movement and helping fund, you know, provisions on ballots and things like that to legalize and decriminalize marijuana. So that's why he was the number one most wanted. Person. Yeah, it's one thing to break the laws. It's another thing to try to change him, pal. Don't you dare. That's right. They went after him and they actually had the Canadians, uh, the Canadian police arrest him and then they extradited him from Canada to the United States to face trial for selling marijuana seats. So even though he wasn't necessarily breaking the law in Canada, 
the Canadian government did the bidding for the United States and brought that guy, brought Mark down to the United States where he was sentenced to five years in federal prison. And now he's finally out again, thank goodness. Yeah, so when they start drafting us to go over to Iran, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you find a different country to go to. I don't think it's going to pan out in Canada anymore. And God has blessed his wife, Jody, who actually stayed by his side throughout all five years. Because you know that wasn't easy on her. And, you know, a lot of times if you split somebody up for a prison stay, the wife goes somewhere else. And yeah, she's actually... She's actually still with him, which is an amazing level of uh, dedication. Wonderful woman, aside from the whole kill the old people for taxes thing. Well, that was yeah. Mark who said that. Apparently. Oh, I thought I thought you said it was the wife. I'm sorry. No. I got confused. Go ahead, George. Okay. Anything else you want to share tonight? No, aside for that, I mean, I could post it. On, you want me to post it? I took a screenshot of it. If you want me to post it on your wall? or uh, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't care what you do. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Yeah, become an amplifier, and then you can put it in the amplifiers group. Yeah, yeah. obviously you can post anything you want over at freetalklive.com or Facebook or the Free Talk Live Facebook or whatever. And George, always good hear, hearing from you. Thanks for the call tonight. Uh, you can be on, just like George there, he was on uh, Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. You do need to send a quick contact request first. If you've never called on Skype, we'll approve it as soon as I notice it coming in. And then once you're approved, you're good to go to call from that point forward and once again just to remind you tomorrow night we're doing a little experiment here we're going to do skype only on free talk live just just for one night i just want to see how it goes maybe it'll be a total bomb uh but you know, we'll see gotta try new things toll free number tonight is 855 450 free i got another new york story chris this is this is turning out to be a very sad episode of Free Talk Live. All this New York stuff is making me <laughs> sick. What's what's what the, what other lunacy are they doing in that place? This one's about a bus. One of those you it's see the zillion bus. of these things. These tour buses driving around New York City. Yeah. This is the Fung Hua bus, and the story's from the Hit and Run blog over at Reason.com. When a Chinese immigrant named Pei Lin Lang started running buses to New York City from a street corner in Boston's Chinatown for only $10 each way, naturally, the established carrier, Peter Pan, turned to the government for help. The state decreed in 2004, thanks to Peter Pan's lobbying efforts, that inner-city bus companies like Liang's Feng Hua could only pick up and drop off passengers from Boston's South Station. People need to play on an even playing field, said Peter Pan's executive vice president of communications. What's the fairness if one operates on the street and one operates out of a terminal? We'll come back with what happened to this entrepreneur. Here's fairness. Leave him alone. In, mo in moments, uh, this is Free Talk Live. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Identity theft is real. So real, it could be making you its next victim right now. At the gas pump, bank, or store where you shop with your credit card, bad guys with RFID scanners can peer into your wallet or purse from a short distance away. Stealing information from your RFID-enabled credit or debit cards, passports, room keys, and ID cards without you even knowing it. Stop the bad guys now with an RFID-blocking wallet from ID Stronghold. ID Stronghold founded the entire entire RFID blocking industry over 10 years ago. Their stylish sleeves, clutch purses, and wallets are shielded throughout. The best you can buy at great pricing, as low as $14.99. Don't wait until your wallet needs replacing. Protect your identity now. Click IDStronghold.com or call 1-800-610-2770. That's 1-800-610-2770. ID Stronghold, the original RFID wallet company. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, we've got Skype as well. The Skype username is lrn.fm. We're talking about the Fung Wang bus, Chinatown bus operator, giving people rides for $10. $10 to go from uh, Boston to New York City. And, of course, the established bus carriers don't like innovators. They don't like upstarts, people that want to come in and provide a fresh service that has not been offered before. So they went after There's a group called Peter Pan. This is the established bus service. The Feng Hua bus is the independent group. The established, uh, the establishment Peter Pan uh, lobbied back in 2004, I guess, to force all inner city, inner city bus companies uh, to pick up and drop off passengers from Boston's South Station, as opposed to just picking them up on the corner of the street somewhere, you know, determining that they wanted to uh, get them at X location. Now the city's going to require, or they had been requiring them, to go to a specific spot. Which is just nonsense. You know, it's, you, can't, you can't claim that this is any of the things that they normally claim. Pretty children, right? Like, this is none of this nonsense. It's literally just, hey, we pick up at the bus station. You should have to pick up at the bus station, too. Meh. That's all it is. And it's, it's, it's literally, it's, it's, it's nothing more than a whine. It is, it, you can't even go and say this is safety, this is for the children, this is uh, da 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 all the stupid no, normal this excuses. This is protection. nothing more than, hey, my business interests are not well served by having a competitor who provides a better service than I, and so I want the government to come put their boot on my competitor. Peter Pan's executive vice president of communications told China Daily that, quote, people need to play on an even playing field. And further, what's the fairness if one operates on the street and one operates out of a terminal? The fairness is, go pick people up on the street, you bums. In 2013, Schwartz, the uh, spokesperson, left the company to become a lobbyist for the bus industry. A top Massachusetts bus regulator told the Boston Globe at the time, quote, The big dog out there, Peter Pan, is dead set against Feng Hua. They don't want that kind of competition. I love it. It's Peter Pan. He's like, I'm going to appeal to the magic of government so that I can stay young and <laughs> profitable forever. 
11 years later, Peter Pan's move against Feng Hua is paying big dividends. Feng Hua has long been one of the best operated and safest bus operators on the road, and yet two years ago it was forced to halt its operations because, an in, because of an incompetent safety inspection carried out by two Massachusetts state employees. That ensnared the company in federal regulatory maze of Kafkaesque proportions. 21 months later, after the company had burned through $3 million buying a new fleet of buses, paying lawyers' fees, and keeping its doors open, Feng Hua finally got the okay to reopen. Not so fast. As the Boston Globe first reported in May, the two state agencies that run Boston South Station are refusing to give Feng Hua a spot in the facility to resume its operations. And this week, DNA Info reported that New York City Councilwoman Margaret Chin was told by Feng Hua's Liang that he was throwing in the towel if the company were permitted to operate from a street curb like in practically every other city, this wouldn't be an issue. For background on how the Massachusetts inspectors botched the operation of Feng Hua's fleet that led to the closure, there's a story over at Reason.com about that. It's so uh, stupid. Like, I've taken, I, I don't know Feng Hua, but like, I, I, when I go down to like DC, I, when I went down to go uh, do uh, Adam versus the Man in Virginia, I go take the Mega Bus, right? Yeah. And you go it's to, cheap, and, right? and yeah, it's, uh, you, sometimes you can get it for as little as a dollar, it's right? Insane. And you just you, how do they even make money on that? I I'm shocked by it. I mean, you don't <laughs> usually get it for a dollar. That's yeah. some marketing gimmick, like okay. for as little as a buck. And then right. you go there, and it's like twenty five dollars. But still, it's twenty five dollars to get from New York to DC. Cool. Count me in. Yeah, right? it's a great deal. And they got Wi Fi and everything. So I'm like, all right, yeah, this sounds like a plan. And uh, you Are know, they clean. They're nice. Yeah, They're it's like clean. It's nice. You know, they get you there. Yep. You know, close to on time. I mean, depending on what traffic conditions are, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, and and it's a good service, and it's you, it's literally you just get on the bus on the street, right? Mm. Um, and New York City is a place where look, uh, parking and traffic can be very complex things, and they managed to pull this off without really inconveniencing people any more than anything else in New York City, and it sure. works really well. Uh, now, when you get to D.C., I think you, they they take you to Union Station, so I don't know if there's a regulation in D.C. causing mm, you to to, to get dropped off there, but. Um, Look, New York City is one of the most complex traffic patterns in the United in, in the world. Yeah, it's really. crazy there. And so they, uh, I mean, not complex traffic patterns. I mean, it's a grid. But I'm just saying, it, the, navigating the traffic there can be very difficult because yeah. it's so overcrowded the streets. And so, uh, if you can safely do this in New York City, you can do this anywhere in the world. So yeah, any absolutely. claims that they're making are absolute nonsense. Right, the claim that they have to go to the station, you've got to go, you've got to go where all the other buses go. And because, then you can't even do that, so right. it's just, hey, we're just plain putting you out of business. That's what it was. You know, you we failed you with an in, incompetent safety inspection because, well, government bureaucrats aren't known for their known for their competence. They're not incentivized to be competent. In fact, they're incentivized to crush the upstarts. They're incentivized to put a stop to companies like Feng Wang. That's what they do. They and, are there to protect the establishment. You know, and this is the thing, and I don't know if we want to uh, skip to chalk the police now or not, but I mean, yeah, this we, is one we of the things that, that we sure. were sort of talking with the with uh, the police officer at the Keene Police Department the other day. When, when we go out to do this chalk the police thing, it's an event mm -hmm. put on by Cop Block that goes on all across the country. And it started in New Hampshire. It was Your, your article actually reminded me about that. <laughs> ChristopherCantwell.com, you wrote up a piece about it today. It was after the chalking eight arrests in Manchester that yeah. chalk the police started. Exactly. And so, you know, this thing is goes on every year that people go out all across the country and they go chalk up, uh, you know, police uh, accountability type messages and that sort of thing. We go over to the Keene Police Department. And uh, that officer, was when you showed up. But it was actually uh, uh, yeah. prior to that, we went to Central Square, which is the middle of town here in Keene. We also went to the Troop C, which is the state police troop uh, barracks. And we chalked over there. So it was really an, an entire afternoon of chalking here in Keene yesterday. Yeah. And then so I showed up around 3.30. We went over to the Keene Police Department and uh, Officer Kyle Macy came out and was talking to us. And, you know, he wouldn't chalk, though. I wanted him to chalk. Yeah. He unfortunately, he did not chalk. But I think we had a really good conversation with the guy. One of the things he said to me while we were a half out there, hour long conversation, it was lengthy. Yeah. And one of the things he says is like, well, well, why don't you go try to make changes somewhere where things are so bad? Like I, I'm acknowledging that, you know, things are a lot better here in New Hampshire than in, than where I'm from in New York or in a lot of other places. And he's saying, well, if it's so much better here, then why aren't you out trying to make
make changes to where where it's worse. A fairly and like, common objection. And I'm like, well, I can't even have a conversation with somebody who wants to ban smoda, soda, ban smoking in my own house, right. ban a bus company from picking up passengers. I'm like, these people are so completely at the other end of the spectrum. I can't even have a conversation with somebody like that. It's just so completely out of whack. I'm like supposed to go talk to them about the war on drugs or taxation. It's just completely impossible. Yeah, I thought that was a good point. And this is a common objection that liberty activists have received. Is like, well, if government's so bad, why don't you go to the where the worst government in the world is? Go to New York City or California and do your activism there. And why are you have to come here to New Hampshire and try to bring more freedom? Yeah, because I want to reduce government to its absolute minimal size, which right. I would say is zero. And I'm not going to be able to do that in a place where Peter Pan can go put his competitor out of business. No, we'll come back with uh, more here. You can share your thoughts with us, whether it's on protectionism or whatever happens to be on your mind. You can join us here on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. I mean, who could possibly side with Peter Pan besides the regulators? I can't imagine anyone listening would take their side on this. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800 34 No Tax to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, SWCPoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called SWCPoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, SWCPoker.eu. Get on over to SWCPoker.eu and start playing now. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. 
freedomsphoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to freedomsphoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenix.com. Freedomsphoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll free to join us here. And also we've got Skype. Skype usernames lrn.fm. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Lots of stuff to talk about, as always, here. But Chalk the Police went on yesterday, and I thought that was worthy of uh, of a little further discussion because, Chris, uh, you know, you, you and I were there. Uh, last night I briefly talked about it with Mark, but he wasn't present for it, although he should have been. I mean, Chalk the Police is a great event for kids to get involved in. Who, What kid doesn't like to be uh, chalking? Of course, Mark has a son, so that could be fun stuff. Uh, by the way, ExpressCoin is uh, where you can go to get cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive, and they're a licensed money services business, so you can get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check. And whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you over at ExpressCoin.com. You can do it from your smartphone with their app or just straight through their website at ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL. You'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no transfer fee at all. ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code is FTL, like Free Talk Live. So, Chalk the Police 2015, it happened yesterday in various different places across, I think, the whole world. I'm pretty sure it's an international event. I know I saw uh, Adamo Freeman from CopLock.org. He was in Cleveland uh, at their event. There were a few other places that I saw pictures from. And, of course, here in Keene, we had uh, pictures and video. The video has been posted to FreeKeen.com. It's actually a lengthy video. Now, that's supposed to be a bad thing for YouTube, but uh, I thought this video was so good content-wise that I wanted to put the entire thing out there. I didn't want to hack it down to a shorter length. And I even did that against my better judgment as far as the quality of the video because I like to put out as as good a quality of product as possible. And there was a conversation between, mostly between you and a local cop here, Kyle Macy, uh, Chris. I was involved to some extent as well as JP, uh, one of the other cop blockers in the area. But it was mostly the two of you. And it was, again, a lengthy discussion that I did not capture on my good camera. A portion of it I got on my good camera, but then I actually went and put that down, and I captured the rest on a pivot head sunglass camera. And uh, and so the quality isn't quite what I would normally yeah, like for it to be. Yeah, visually it's not everything that we would like it to yeah. be, but, I mean, it picks up the audio, which is really the driving thrust of the of the thing. And it was, You see me looking around at, like, you know, the dog and looking at other things, and you know, it wasn't perfect. But. Yeah, but it was... Uh, it, it it is something that has been surprising to me since I have come to New Hampshire. Just how uh, how frankly we can sort of discuss things with uh, some government bureaucrats. You know, this specifically law enforcement. Yeah, right? uh, I mean the, the 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 legislature as well. I mean, you know, the the, the guys can see on uh, my website the anarcho lobbyist category on the right. on the site. I mean, we've got videos where we're going up and speaking before the various committees at the House and the Senate, and we'll do it um, again next year, and we certainly will. And, uh, you know, but law enforcement as well, which I thought would be even more difficult, frankly, because that's that, uh, you know, the, the legislatures are trying to, you know, they want your vote and whatnot. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they're they have these hearings where it's their purpose to listen to you or, or at, at least, least give like you it. the impression that they're yeah. listening to you. Um, you know, law enforcement, uh, especially when you're 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 Christopher Cantwell, especially when you're the author of "Violently Overthrow the Government" <laughs> and articles like "Dead Cops Mean Less Oppression." You know, you'd think you that would these be guys- the last guy they would want to have a conversation with. You would think. You'd think. But, uh, you know, and I, I've remarked before about I've had conversations with Chief Costa and Lieutenant Tenney and Officer Baca and uh, the, the several keen police who have been very personable and very friendly. And like we're, we have very frank discussions where I do not mince words with these guys. I explain to them exactly why I'm saying the things that I'm saying on the website. And, you know, they're giving me their opinions on it. You sort of have found out that at least one of them is a regular visitor to your website, that uh, they've read your articles. And had not just it wasn't that that the dude was blowing smoke. 
he could actually cite things that you know you had talked about in your articles. You would only know if you'd actually read them. Yeah, right? exactly. That I would bring up certain points, and he'd be like, "Oh, I read that in this article that you put <laughs> out," and I was like, "Whoa, this is like weird." Because my my impression of it was like I figured that they would have gotten some kind of training, right? Like when I when I came to Keene, my first interaction with the police was. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Right? And like, <laughs> I had never no seen idea who this guy was, and he knows exactly who I am. So I'm figuring yeah. they've gotten some kind of briefing. My photo's on a wall somewhere. Yep. But, uh, you know, it turned, and I figured that there would be some kind of like propagandist who tells them, watch out for this guy. He talks about killing cops, and you know, mm-hmm. right? But um, they were actually able to intelligently comment. One, one of them actually is a regular listener to Radical Agenda, my podcast, hmm. which is, you know, that's a two hour long audio production, yep. which is a little bit different than a hit and run skim through a blog post right uh so this was really interesting to me and he actually said at one point he's like look some of the things that you say if i was in the same room as you i'd want to knock your head off your neck and i'll leave the expletives out for the radio yeah but he said but you make a lot of good points and you're very entertaining and i was like <laughs> oh it was a nice little ego boost and um and other ones you know are regular readers of the blog so i mean especially um one of them, I think the entire Keene Police Department seems to have read. Uh, I wrote an article about this heroin bust that happened in Keene. And I, and, yeah, you know, and it was great. Chief Miola had said— I syndicated that at Free Keene. It was excellent. Yeah, and Chief Miola had said that he thought that you know because of this heroin bust, it would reduce property crime. And I said, well, actually, no. You know, Reductions in supply increase prices, mm-hmm. so you're probably going to have an increase in property crime. Basic That's sort of the pattern of the war, war on drugs. And uh, it seems to have gotten around. A lot of them actually agree with me on that. They're like, you know mm. what? You're, you're right. I just don't know what to do about it, so I will continue to go and lock people up for drugs. And, you know, and that's a nice way to start a conversation it's a starting with point. them. And it's something that— And you wouldn't get that in a lot of places, I don't think. I wouldn't get that in a lot of places, and it's something that, you know, I've got to give you a certain amount of credit for, sir. You know, I came here as a, a very angry guy, still yep. got a lot of angst to, still. But, I mean, you, you've you've— told me you know when i came here look if you if you talk to these guys you know you can sort of have a relationship with them and you know try to you know get a point across instead of just being hostile and dismissing them as evil terrible people right um and i have been able to do that and it has been a thing that i think has been really positive i i really and i've seen it happening for you and and you and i uh have had conversations uh, about this you know you'll tell me about the when you go and meet up with one of these guys and have a chat in fact you actually had at least one or two of them on different occasions, come hang out at the Keen Activist Center. Not inside, but right. on the on the front porch, just chatting. Yeah, while I was out doing the Night's Watch here, you know, yeah. they'd drive by and, you know, say hello. And I was like, hey, come on, hang out. And, you know, right. it was just like hanging out with uh, Lieutenant Tenney about talking about stuff that wasn't even like, you know, re- related. Yeah. Just, you Not know, issues, all, but yeah. just stuff. Yeah, just talking about life and stuff. And I was like, you know, you're very difficult to hate. <laughs> 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 Which well, yeah. sucks, because that's my whole MO, yeah. you know? Well, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I, it's been, um, I mean, I don't know if you would term it this but for me it was a paradigm shift um it was uh, a a big shift in the way that i thought about things and i've heard you say similar things to what i have had experienced as well like you know no longer seeing them as the cops but seeing them as individuals who do think differently and they do have different beliefs you know while one of them might say you're right about this heroin thing another one might say something different they don't all have the exact same opinion but most of them at least around here and i can't speak for other areas i don't know about the manchester cops but at least most of them around here they'll have a conversation with you most of them there's a few that'll give you this at least me there's a couple that'll give me the silent treatment right um but most of them are willing to stand and talk to you so you know kyle macy here the officer in the video over at freekeen.com you can see it if you like uh you know, he could have done other things. He could have just come out and checked to make sure we weren't vandalizing the place and gone in and, you know, done something else. But uh, he stayed out and had a relatively cordial, friendly and jovial conversation. There was a lot of joking and laughing. And- yeah, we're laughing. We're talking about, you know, alternatives to state institutions and, you know, sort of the, the nature of state power and um you know, talking about like generalizations and that sort of thing. Right. You know, he said, "What if I said all free staters are a holes?" Right? He's right. I mean, he's exactly right, and that really shows that he understands the idea of, "Hey, you're all individuals," and I it would not be fair of me as the police officer to judge you, uh, Chris Cantwell, based on what Ian says or does. Well, but at the same time, like I, I think that there's a certain value to identifying groups, right? And that's sort of what I tried to get across to him. So I said to him, "Well, sure, he's wearing a uniform, so he could put you in handcuffs, that's right?" Certainly- so like. 
like there's there's the thing of like he says, well, what if I said all free staters are a holes? And I'm like, well, I, I'm not entirely sure. I completely disagree with you, but like, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like you could say more accurately, you could say all free staters are libertarians, and you right. would be and you would be wrong about that. Yeah. However, it would be a statement that you could use properly, just like I can say all government is coercive violence. Yeah, that's true. And that conversation uh, I thought was really interesting, and it's available right now over at freekeen.com. So check that out. We'll continue here in a moment. Paradigm shifts, they happen if, if you allow them to. 855 450 free if you're open to it. More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts with us on the live Sunday edition. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a Block It Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. You are an individual with your own thoughts, decisions, and actions. So why should you be penalized for not enrolling in the subpar health insurance mandated by the government when you can be truly independent with Liberty HealthShare, a bold, innovative alternative allowing you to take back control and make your own decisions about your health care. Mention this ad when you call to learn more. 800-714-6993. That's 800-714-6993. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we are one. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. CopLock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States, and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopLock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopLock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopLock possible. So please join the CopLock network now at coplock.lrn.fm. That's coplock.lrn.fm. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. And of course, you can join us here toll free. 855 450 free. We're talking about a paradigm shift. The uh, an interesting thing that has happened here. It happened to me. It's happening uh, with Chris, where you, uh, I moved here in 2006 to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project because I love freedom and I wanted to be in a place with other activists who are working towards that goal. And that's, of course, the point of the Free State Project. Uh, you can go to freestateproject.org to learn more about that. But it's interesting when, and it's sort of this kind of, I'll tie it into the discussion we were having at the beginning of the show about intolerance uh, in the liberty community towards people who are principled, liberty minded people. You've been experiencing the butt end of this intolerance from some of the folks in this movement, Chris Cantwell. But yet it's ironic, isn't it, that the keen police are showing themselves to be a more tolerant <laughs> and, you know, agreeable group of people than some of the people within this very movement? Yeah, that is uh, kind of an interesting paradigm that we have, that I can I can have a better conversation with the chief of the police in, in Keene, New Hampshire, than I can with Carla Garrick, for the president of the Free State Project. Yeah, th- there's actually a new uh, chief of police here in Keene, and the last guy was doing the silent treatment on me, and he was being kind of a jerk for the last couple of years. And then only at the very end of 2014 did he actually acknowledge my presence once. So what happened with the uh, the, the former police chief, this guy, Ken Miola? He uh, and I and Sam Dodson, who was former co-host on Free Talk Live back in like 2009 or 2010, we actually invited this guy out to go to breakfast. And we did that twice. We actually went one month and then the next month we went again and we were going to kind of make a monthly thing out of this, like breakfast with the police chief. And let's, you know, we don't agree on everything, but but let's talk, you know, let's let's yeah. let's have a conversation. And I thought it was going well. Um, obviously, you know, we weren't going to convince him to end the war on drugs or anything like that. But, you know, I thought that it was worth my while to go in and do this. And then ultimately he arrested me and Sam uh, shortly thereafter for the drinking game, which is where we went into the city council chambers with open containers of water, but it was in uh, beer bottles. So like <laughs> em- emptied out beer bottles. We made labels that said not a beer. And uh, the mayor stopped the city council meeting to target us and then sick the police uh, on us in that case. And it was actually the police chief who was there who ordered the arrest. And it was after that that the police chief refused to go to uh, to breakfast with us at that point, using the excuse initially that it was because, well, he's a witness against us in a case. And so it would be an improper sort of courtroom procedure for a right. witness to meet with the defendants like that. So, OK, fine. So after a year goes by and the case finally actually never happened, they were uh, they canceled it. They threw out the charges the day before the case went to court, which obviously they never really had a case to begin with. It was totally targeting the activists to get us out of their hair for that moment. And so after that, I came back to the police chief. I called him up again and I said, all right, well, now the case is over. Are you ready to go out to breakfast again? And that's when he told me that he doesn't like where I'm coming from these days and that he would prefer not to. And from that point on, he basically treated me like I didn't exist. And when I would uh, see him in person, he would act as though I wasn't there. He would ignore the things that I would try to say to him. Just, you know, say hello to the guy, you know, just talk, talk to somebody like a human being. And he just I was like a ghost to this man. It was really bizarre, kind of childish, seven year old elementary school behavior coming from a grown, a purportedly grown adult. Then. Uh, A couple years later, and it was actually at the end of uh, 2014, there was the Pumpkin Fest riots, and we covered that in great detail here on Free Talk Live and uh, over at freekeen.com. It actually got international press coverage, and I was in the midst of these riots, not as a rioter, but as a member of the media recording video of what was going on, and I got video that led towards uh, arrests. It led to people who were chucking full bottles of beer and cans of beer at other people uh, in a huge bottle war. I got about 15 minutes worth of footage of this bottle war, and they were able to use that footage that I turned over to them. Uh, you know, I put it online, but I also gave them a original high-res copy of it. Yeah, if the police want to go out and get people who are actually, like, injuring people and damaging property, I'm, I'm perfectly happy for them to go and perform that function. And so there was a press conference that happened um, shortly thereafter with the police chief and the city manager talking with mainstream media that had come out. And liberty activists were there as, as independent press. 
and he actually answered one of my questions at the press conference, which he kind of had to do. But after that, I approached him with a follow-up question when nobody else was really paying any attention. And that's where he could have treated me as he had been, where he had been ignoring me. And he didn't. He actually made eye contact and answered my question and actually treated me like a human being for a moment. And so I thought later that, and I'm speculating here, but I think that he might have treated me that way because he realized that maybe I wasn't the bad guy that he thought that I was, right? Because I had given them the leads, basically. Right. And I mean, I think that... I think they, they, they sort of realize, at least on some level, that we're not criminals, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we're, we're not big fans of government. We, we are well, I might be the... a criminal in that I've broken plenty of laws, but I've never hurt anybody. Right. And, and I mean, that was sort of, you know, I, I, I guess um, what prevented me from getting myself killed when they pulled up on the scene of me pointing a gun at a man, right? right. Downtown Keene, three in the morning. They realized this guy's pointing a gun at somebody. It's probably because somebody came after him, right? Mm-hmm. And they, they sort of understood that, and uh, that went very amicably. And, uh, you know, I've been... I haven't been shy about saying so. Right. Um, and so, you know, it, that was, you know, sort of when it started to change for me that I was like, wait a second, I was pretty sure you were going to kill me. Maybe I should have a conversation with you. Um, and you did. Yeah. Much to the chagrin of some of your uh, viewers and fans who were like, what? Can't yeah. well? You You're can't. talking to the cops. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which, you know, everybody loved to run wild with. You know, there's a lot of people who like to say that I'm a cop. Uh, oh, yeah. That I'm some kind of, you know, <laughs> counterintelligence or something, you know, uh, co-intel pro, you know, federal agent. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, sorry, you know, all these years I've been involved, you know, haven't been able to nail down a single indictment. But, you know. I, and I, I don't do so. Apparently, such a- you and me both. There's an article out there uh, that says I'm a federal agent, too. Or you're the guy, is that, you're, you're referring to the one who meet the man who snitched on Larkin Rose or That's something. That's the one I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Um, you know, and I don't go through, I go through a lot of effort to sort of almost look like law enforcement, right? I mean, I wear, you got a belt. I, I've always got collared shirts. I've got a bunch of things on my belt, including a right. handgun, a flashlight, a, a two-way radio, you know, and I drive a Taurus, which you know, at least back in New York is the car that all the, all the undercovers drive, oh, right? Oh, okay. And so, you know, <laughs> I am like, I am perfectly happy for people to think that I'm a cop. You know, I am not involved in the drug trade. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be a real pain in the neck if I were to go out and cop some drugs from a stranger, but I could probably walk up to people. People would be like, empty out your pockets, and they just do it, right? Yeah, like maybe. I could, I could rob drug dealers all day. Just be like, you want to go jail? You want to go home? You know, just <laughs> hand, it, hand it over. You know, if you tell somebody to hand over the drugs and they do it, and you're not pointing a gun at them, that's a legitimate transaction. <laughs> exactly. Right? I'd be like, give me all your drugs, and they're like, okay, officer. And I'd be like, I didn't say it was a cop, but thank you very much. And I'm gonna go snort lines all night. But uh, you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't care. I'm like, people, people accuse me of being a cop, but I'm like, fine. Assume that I'm a cop, and then. And the next time that I ask you to do something illegal, say no, right? Because I'm probably pretty unlikely to yeah. do that. <laughs> so uh, just to, to finish up the story about the police chief. So he retires. The guy just like just shortly after we'd had this brief conversation where he finally treated me like a human being again, uh, he decided he was going to retire. And this new guy, Brian Costa, takes over. You actually had like breakfast or lunch or something with, with him. Yeah, I had a coffee with him in him. the early afternoon, I think, yeah. And then shortly thereafter, like a few days after that, I happened to be out in Central Square. I forget what for. I think I was just waiting for something to open or whatever. I was there for some reason. I was like sitting there playing Ingress, which I hardly ever do. And so I was just standing there in the middle of Central Square. And I look up, and there's the police chief standing right in front of me. We're the only two people in the park. So he made a point. to see. He saw me in the park, and he made a point of coming over to introduce himself. And I just, you know, had a brief conversation, lasted maybe five minutes, where we talked about a few different things. And, you know, he was a, a gentleman and, and very courteous and, and nice and you know, made good eye contact and seemed he seemed real genuine. And, you know, he didn't have to do that. You know, if he's yeah. driving around or walking around downtown, he didn't have to go out of his way to come over and, and meet Ian Freeman. But he did. Yeah. If these guys are BSing us, they're very good at it. I'll give them that. Right. I mean, I, I sat down. I think it probably was like a half hour, 45 minutes I spent with Chief Costa. And I mean, we talked about, you know, sort of you know what what led our lives to the point that we're at you know yep. previous careers and that sort of thing and you know just you know stuff about our lives and you know talked about some of the you know issues both of us had um uh, talked about solutions to the war on drugs and i said you know there's other ways of dealing with this and you know he said, well we're going to keep on enforcing these laws anyway of course but um you know it was it, it was personable and it yeah. was and it was 
you know, kind of is kind of because I like to be an uncompromising guy and I am a big fan of using moral condemnation Mm -hmm. as a tool by which to discourage behaviors. Right. So if somebody else was going out and, you know, kidnapping and assaulting people for peaceful, voluntary activities, like very clearly we're going to say, like, that's a terrible thing and we're just going to ostracize you. We don't want you around. But at the same time, if we're trying to impact change, it's like, all right, maybe having a conversation with these guys is a thing worth doing. And I'm not going to be able to do that if I just, you know, you shut them out, meet them as you're a violent criminal. I hate you. You're a human being. You're making a mistake. And I'm going to let them know when I think they're wrong. And I'm going to let them know when I think they've done the right thing. You know, positive reinforcement as well as critiquing it, uh, critiquing their uh, their missteps because we've all messed up. We're humans. 855, 450 free. There's more coming up here in moments. Uh, Social Security recipients going to be banned from having guns? Hey, guys, I'm Tim Baker. I'm Daniel Brown. And I'm Sean Stewart. And we are the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Us three chumps love to talk too much, and for some reason other people seem to enjoy it. That's why we started You, Me, and BTC, which which is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Find our show at youmeandbtc.com every Thursday. We also post Bitcoin-related reviews, opinion articles, and much more. Subscribe, like, and follow at youmeandbtc.com. Gary, why aren't you outside enjoying the party? Uh, Hey, Michelle, it's this heartburn. When it hits, it really hits hard. Oh, I'm sorry. That's it. I've had it. I'm going to kick acid with Rolaids. Unlike Tums, new Rolaids Advanced goes to work instantly for combined powerful relief of your worst symptoms of heartburn, bloating, and gas. Wow, you're back fast. Yeah, I feel much better. Now this is a party. Kick acid and gas with new Rolaids Advanced. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, July 19th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,134 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $275. Antiwar.com reports addressing the possibility of Congress blocking the Iran nuclear deal with the P5 plus one. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest warned that such a move would isolate the United States internationally and would render U.S. sanctions against Iran, many of which are supposed to be lifted by the deal, effectively unenforceable. Earnest went on to say that the sanctions were what brought Iran to the table to negotiate in the first place, and if the U.S. Congress kills the deal, they would get all the benefits of the deal without having to give up anything. The argument makes some sense as the U.S. sanctions were grudgingly supported internationally on the idea that it would lead to a deal like the one finally reached. If the U.S. reneged on the internationally backed deal after finally getting it done, many nations would probably balk at letting the U.S. sanctions return unchallenged. At any rate, this is seen as extremely unlikely as there would need to be a supermajority in both houses of Congress to block the deal, and despite some claims to the contrary from hawks and a lot of money being being poured into the campaign by the Israeli lobby, that's likely an unattainable number for congressmen to sway. 
Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports seven employees of the maximum security prison where Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was being held have been charged in his escape. Mexico's attorney general said Friday that the prison workers will be jailed in the state of Guanajuato as the investigation continues. Officials did not release the names of the suspects or their role in the prison. Federal sources told Mexican Daily Reforma seven men and two women who worked security at the prison helped Guzman escape on July 12th. Earlier in the week, Mexican officials said it took guards 18 minutes to respond to Guzman's cell the night he escaped. Investigators are interviewing dozens of others who may have aided in Guzman's escape. Among them is prison director Valentin Cardenas. Interior Minister Miguel Angel Osorio Chong said at a news conference, This is part of what the Attorney General's office is looking at if the protocols were fulfilled in the correct times. Guzman was last seen at the Altaplano Federal Prison in the town of Alma Loyo de Juarez in the state of Mexico at 8.52 p.m. on July 12th. He escaped through a mile-long tunnel in a shower area shielded by a short wall for privacy. Closed-circuit video shows him entering the shower area twice fully clothed and bending down. The second time, he never resurfaced. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports more than half of Germans think the planned deal with Greece is bad and many have preferred that the crisis-stricken country left the Eurozone rather than getting the chance for further aid, according to an opinion poll. Lawmakers in Germany, the biggest contributor to Eurozone bailouts, on Friday gave their go-ahead for the currency bloc to negotiate a third bailout for Greece that could total 86 billion euros over three years. In the YouGov survey seen by German newspaper Welt am Sonntag, 56 6% of respondents said they thought the plan for such a deal with Greece was bad, with just over one-fifth of those saying it was very bad. Only 2% deemed it to be positive, while another 27% said they thought it was somewhat positive. Only a third clearly said they wanted the country to remain a member of the single currency bloc, according to the newspaper. A separate survey by pollster Forsa published on Friday showed that 53% of German voters had wanted Parliament to back the negotiations, with 42% against. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Japan grants suffrage to female robots. And a hypochondriac maple tree is always convinced it has Asian longhorn beetles. The following two statements are true. The previous statement is false, and this is the Onion Week in Review. This week, Americans nationwide were stunned to hear horrific allegations on Wall Street revealing that numerous junior bankers have been forced to survive on a mere $6,800 per week. The findings, which implicate numerous high-profile financial institutions such as Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, and Citibank, suggest that hundreds of first-year bankers are constantly deprived of basic necessities, including penthouse apartments overlooking Central Park and regular company-financed vacations to the French Riviera. Many of these bankers are 23 or 24 years old and don't even have access to an expense account of over $50,000 a year. Not only that, but some of them are making as little as 20 times minimum wage. I mean, this is truly disgraceful. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour. This is the live Sunday edition of the show. You can join us here, and you can bring up anything you want. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Skype usernames LRN.FM. 
Will there be gun restrictions being placed on Social Security recipients? That's the story that Chris Cantwell has brought to the table here this evening. You can comment on that or anything you want to discuss. Chris, what's uh, what's the deal? What's going on out yeah, there? Yeah, I've got the, the story in Fox News here, and this one kind of irks me uh it says uh, the obama looks to ban social security recipients from owning guns because you know all these mass shootings they're usually carried out by elderly people who are just you know hate children so they run into the schools and kill. <laughs> oh wait a second that's complete nonsense i forgot um, when was the last mass shooting by an elderly person i i don't i can't think of one mm. frankly uh and i mean you could sort of imagine look i had a i had a grandfather who uh uh, started to lose it in his old age, yep. right? And so my parents went and said, maybe it's not a good idea to have all of these rifles in the house, right? Mm-hmm. And they and they and the the family took the guns away from the guy because they said you're probably not qualified to be able to decide who to shoot, right? He'd okay. sort of forget who we were and that sort of thing. Not good. Could be sort of scary. So I can understand wanting to get guns away from people who have Alzheimer's or whatever, right? Uh, but at the same time. Uh, it it irks me a little bit. Let me go. Let me go into the story yeah. in Fox News here. Uh, the, it says the Obama administration wants to keep people collecting uh, people keep people collecting Social Security benefits from owning guns if it is determined they are unable to manage their own affairs. The Los Angeles Times reported the push, which could potentially affect millions whose monthly disability payments are handled by others, is intended to bring the Social Security Administration in line with laws that prevent gun sales to felons, drug addicts, immigrants in the United States illegally, and others, according to the paper. Paper. The language of the federal gun laws restricts ownership to people who are unable to manage their own affairs due to marked subnormal intelligence, mental illness, incompetency, condition, or disease, which could potentially affect a large group within Social Security. If Social Security, which has never taken part in background check systems, uses the same standards as the Department of Veterans Affairs, which is the idea floated, then millions of beneficiaries could be affected with about 4.2 million adults receiving monthly benefits that are managed by representative payees. The latest part is a move. The latest move is part of the efforts by the president o- by President Obama to strengthen gun control following the Sandy Hook Elementary School massacre in 2012, which again. Yeah, all of these gun regulations that they try to put in place after these things, almost none of it would do anything to stop it, right? Of course Sandy, not. Sandy Hook was a, a situation where a kid stole his mother's gun, right. killed her, and then went off and killed a bunch of people in the school, which, by the way, was illegal for him to do. So it yeah. doesn't seem like he cares very all much. All of those things were illegal. Critics are blasting the plan, saying that expanding the list of people who cannot own guns based on financial competence is wrongheaded. They, the ban, they argue, would keep guns out of the hands yeah. of some dangerous people, but would also include people who simply have a bad memory or a hard time balancing a checkpoint. And that's sort of important to understand. Like I, like I said about my grandfather, okay? We were we we had a concern that he's forgetting who we are, right? He's mm-hmm. he's screwing up names. He's saying where am I? That sort of thing. That's a guy you don't want having a gun, right? But that's not everybody who has their social security taken care of by somebody else. That you have some custodian over account. Maybe a guy's having trouble with math, something like that. But he's also probably by that point in time pretty having a pretty hard time defending himself right somebody who's mm. in a position where He's they have, to have somebody you know uh manage their social security i mean this might be because the guy has trouble you know making it to the bank it might be a physical sure. disability preventing him from you know dealing with this it might not even be a mental incompetence issue this is just if somebody has somebody else managing their social security for them we're going to yank your guns and that i think is a, crazy. is a really serious problem because i mean if somebody you know is in a position where they need somebody else to manage their social security for them they, they're probably not going to have a good time fighting off a burglar i was just uh, actually was just watching the uh, television program better call saul have you seen this i haven't seen it yet i want to though yeah you've seen breaking bad i loved breaking bad if you loved breaking bad you'll love better call saul i mean it's not the same kind of uh intensity of a program it's more of a funny show than it is anything else but it's still got some of the same i guess feel to it it's the same producers and same acting crew and all that um, really enjoyed it. I finished watching the season. And anyway, at one point, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but he gets involved in Elder Law. This is It's basically a prequel, so it's sort of how Saul became Saul Goodman. In fact, <laughs> in the first season, you don't actually he doesn't actually change his names. He's still got his old original name, which he was born with. And so um, anyway, he's doing Elder Law, and he goes into this uh, retirement or assisted living f- facility. And I guess, and maybe this isn't uncommon, they made it sound like this is a fairly common thing, where the assisted living facility 
actually takes all the checks from these elderly folks. So whatever checks they're getting, social security, pension, you know, whatever it is that's coming in because they're elderly and that's what they, you know, that's their life. Uh, the facility takes those checks. They then use money from the checks to pay for their facility uh, to essentially pay their rent. And then they give them an allowance that of, of the leftovers. Right. right. And so part of the the plot of the uh, the season is that this facility is screwing over their uh, their tenants, Shocking. basically. Yeah. Hmm. So, you know, charging $14 for an aspirin, that kind of thing, and then they get called on it. Um, but I thought that was, you know, interesting because I bet you that's not too uncommon where, hey, I'm 70 years old. I don't really want to take care of all these bills anymore. Why should I have to do any of this stuff? I got this person over here, the, my, you know, the person giving me this apartment that they're willing to take care of the bills. I trust them. Here, you handle that and then just cut me a check at the end of the month and I'll go buy some fun stuff and have a good time. Yeah, exactly. It's it's, it's Now it's I can't far, have a gun? It's a far different story to, you know, manage all of the finances of a place where maybe you say, hey, I'm old. I'm going to let somebody else deal with this. Then you know I don't know the difference between uh, you know a, a home invasion robbery and my daughter coming over to visit. Yeah, these people weren't incompetent. It's just that why would you want to bother with all the bills if you don't have to? I mean, if you could pay someone to do your bills for you, why wouldn't you want to do that? Yeah, if you I trust the there's, person. There's there's a, there's a lot of probably a lot of probably uh, pretty wealthy people out there who have somebody else managing their finances. Absolutely. Right? And so if somebody's retired and wants to pay somebody to go deal with that, and now they're being managed by somebody else, now they're going to be disarmed, and that's just despicable. We can continue with this topic, but uh, also there's another story about elderly folks being cracked down upon in Indiana. But first, let's go to Alan listening in our very own Keene, New Hampshire. Alan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Chris. Hi, Ian. Hi, Chris. Welcome, I've sir. met both you guys in person. Cool. Uh, this is uh, Alan from Missouri. Yes, sir. Good to, good to hear from you, buddy. What's going on? Welcome. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Uh, well, sir, uh, I just had a question about the whole Anarchapoco um, uh, Liberty Fest thing that uh, Chris got actually pulled from as a speaker. And I was wondering if Chris might be able to elaborate a little bit for me about how this Jeff Tucker guy actually screwed that up for you, man. Okay, so there's two different issues that are going on here. So I had two speaking engagements coming up, uh, one in October and one in February, which I got yanked from. Now, the first one in October was Liberty Fest NYC. Now, I don't know how much of a role Tucker played in that particular one. The reason that I was told that I was yanked from that one was a situation which came to be known in libertarian circles as Boobgate. There was an activist who uh, rented a room from me for a period of time who ended up dating a roommate of mine and gave him a, a, a topless photo of herself, mm. which got leaked. Now, I was accused of leaking this photo. It was not you. It was not me. I never, and she knew that. She never gave me a photo of her. She knows exactly where the photo went. She knew mm -hmm. that she was falsely accusing me. But she, she sort of, after she left, uh, when she left New Hampshire, she sort of teamed up with this leftist Bernie Sanders supporter by the name of Cassandra Fairbanks. And so it was politically feasible to try to pin this thing to me to try to make demonize me. Oh, you're a bad guy, name. Chris. It must have been you. Exactly. And so uh, what what ended up happening was after uh, my name got dragged through the mud on the entire thing, I did a podcast where I talked about it. And at the end of the podcast, then I did tweet the photo, which everybody had already seen, which mm. had already made the rounds. And I and I tweeted her and I at and I at mentioned her on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I said, "You want to play by that game? Here, fine. I will tweet the photo." So uh, when I am uh, when. That was the reason that you got booted from allegedly. That, that's the reason that it was Liberty pitched Fest. to me. So, so uh, J uh, Josie Wales uh, uh, and um, uh, Kerry Wedler apparently said that they were going to uh, pull themselves from the uh, from the Liberty Fest NYC event mm. if I was speaking. So, I had I had told Ian Chaffee he he tried to get me to do this event, and I said um, that I told him no at first, but I maybe we'll finish it up. Yeah, we, we will go. finish that. Alan, you can stand by if you wish. 855 450 free coming up the indiana gaming commission cracking down on some octogenarians for playing euchre euchre whatever that is apparently it's kind of like gambling <gasps> 855 450 free plus more on chris getting booted from some events he'll explain more on the way it's free talk live Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. 
I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. You're fired. According to the Small Business Administration, 75% of small businesses plan to eliminate jobs or reduce workers' hours to part-time. You're fired. According to Gallup, the unemployment rate recently jumped to nearly 9%, and the underemployment rate hit a staggering 17.9%. You're fired. One out of three young adults and one out of two recent college graduates are underemployed. Hello, I'm Keith Abel, a pharmacist and a home business entrepreneur. In 2011, I became one of those statistics myself. Instead of looking for another job in corporate America, I joined Dr. Joel Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy. We're creating steady incomes for ourselves and would like to show you how to do the same. If you want to supplement your current income, replace your income, so you don't have to become one of the statistics, then give me a call toll-free at 866-257-3105. 866-257-3105. You're fired. Don't wait till you hear those words. Start creating an extra income today. 866-257-3105. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You can join us here. Toll-free number. It's the live Sunday edition, 855-450-FREE. Not even the elderly are safe from the state crackdowns on their freedoms. Now, we were talking about uh, there's there's a story from the national level where there's a proposal, I guess, to restrict gun ownership for elderly folks that are on Social Security that have someone else managing their funds for them because that might show that they're somehow mentally incompetent and therefore unable to have a gun, which is a really scary idea. Uh, Coming up, senior citizens citizens are uh, being cracked down upon in Indianapolis or in Indiana, across Indiana, for playing a card game. And right now, we are going to go back to your phone calls here in a moment, but I also want to let you know about uh, Purse. Go to purse.freetalklive.com, and you can save 25%, 20%, 30%. I mean, you can save whatever percentage you choose, generally, if it's... 25% 25% or less. You can try for more. 
Uh, you, sometimes you get more. Like I just saved 29% off the pair of headphones that I'm wearing by paying for them with Bitcoin. Now, you can't do that on Amazon. That's why you have to go to purse.freetalklive.com. You get signed up there, and anything you buy from that point forward, Free Talk Live will get a very small portion of the purchase price. You get the stuff you want at a tremendous discount. I'm not joking. You can easily go and get 20, 25% off of almost anything at Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. I have I have used Purse and it is amazing. Isn't I, it? Yeah, I was shocked. I was like, there's no way that this is gonna work. This has got to be some kind of sham. And nope. then I, I nope. I got I got paid my Bitcoin, got my product, uh, released it from escrow, and I was good to go. Now, Purse does deal with people who are trying to scam them. Uh, so there are people that are out there trying to take advantage of Purse. Yeah, but they have a guarantee up to like ten thousand dollars or do. something like that. They've yeah. got an amazing guarantee. And so if if for some reason you run into some sort of a ro- you know road bump or whatever, the, the customer service at Purse is awesome and they will take care of you. So go to purse.freetalklive.com. I've done like two dozen transactions over purse over the last six months. Basically everything I buy on Amazon, I now buy through purse.freetalklive.com. Yeah, so why would you do it any other way? It, you'd be insane to not want to save 20% on Amazon. <laughs> the average, it was actually interesting. They sent us the statistics, you know, because they got statistics on their users or whatever. And yeah. so there's the average in the United States. Uh, there's different countries, different averages for them. But in the United States, the average is 20%. So the average purse user gets 20% off. And they showed us the, the averages of Free Talk Live users, people who've signed up under purse.freetalklive.com. And it was like 18%. So basically the same as uh, the national average. And then they broke it down by the percentage. As you could see, most people actually use purse instant. So they just take the 5%. Yeah. So those 5 percenters are kind of bringing the average down a little bit. There were a bunch of people that were getting 25% as well. Um, so it's really it's up to you what percentage you want off. If you want it in a super hurry, you can use Purse Instant and then get an instant 5% off. If you're willing to wait a few hours, as much as a day or so, then you can nail 20 25%, no problem. Yeah, I did I did my first order. I put it to 20%, and within six hours, yep. the order was placed, and the thing was on its way. And I was like, wow. The 29% off these headphones took less than a day. So check nice. it out, purse.freetalklive.com. We're back with Alan, who had asked you, uh, Chris, to explain what happened. Why were you, all of a sudden, you were announced as a speaker for an Arcapulco and also the Liberty Fest in New York City. You'd begun ex- expressing what happened with Liberty Fest. Yeah. Why were you booted this week from both of those events? Yeah, and so, Alan is still here. Yeah, so uh, good to hear from you, Alan. And so the, the, the Liberty Fest thing, they they started off telling me that it was because of this, you know, tweet of a, a, a woman's uh, topless photograph, which I tweeted after my name had been dragged through the mud, accusing me of leaking it, but I, I hadn't originally done it. But after my name was dragged through the mud, I said, you want to play it that way? Fine, I'll tweet the photo. Uh, and so this was the, um, the what was originally picked. Now, when that happened, I reached out to Jeff Berwick, who puts on this thing, Anarchapulco. Jeff is the host of a show called Anarchast, and yep, he's the, nice guy. Uh, he runs a blog called The Dollar Vigilante, and he's sort of got his little move here project in Acapulco, Mexico, where he's trying to get like-minded people to come down there to this, uh, this you know, get out of the United States. And I had entertained this myself for a little while. I was thinking about it, but I'm not a big fan of Mexico's gun control laws. In any case, uh, you know, I reached out to Jeff because I was writing about getting kicked off of Liberty Fest NYC. And I said, Jeff, how are you going? Because I hadn't been announced yet. He has not mm-hmm. yet announced Anarchapulco 2016. So I said, Jeff, how are you going to deal with it when the boycott threats come in? Right? Because I was about to link to him when I was talking about Liberty Fest NYC. And he says, who's going to who's gonna boycott yet my event? I mean, we're all ANCAPs. I'm not bringing in social justice warriors and minarchists and stuff. I'm like, you've got Jeffrey Tucker on your lineup. And he's like, you think Tucker would be a problem? And he's like, let me give him a call. And sure enough, uh, while Jeff's on the phone with uh, Jeff, T- uh, Jeff Berwick is on the phone with Jeff Tucker, he's in messenger with me. And he's like, oh, man, this is a problem because I've sort of gone after Jeffrey Tucker in the blogosphere because uh, I feel Jeffrey Tucker has sort of taken this social justice warrior angle in order to, like, increase his uh, business with Liberty.me, his, like, pay-to-blog platform, mm-hmm. social network, pay-to-play social network thing. And so, uh, you know, Tucker tells Berwick, you know, oh, well, you know, if you, I don't want anything to do with this guy. And if you have him there, then the Foundation for Economic Education probably isn't going to let me be there. And so, you and know, they're a sort of have to. Of yeah, the event. Exactly. They're, they're a sponsor of the event and they're bringing Tucker there. And uh, so uh, Jeff, you know, has forced to make this decision between having Jeffrey Tucker come to his event or having me come to his event. And Jeffrey it's so Tucker. Petty. 
It really is. And I mean, I, I don't mind Jeff Tucker. I get along with him. We've had him on Free Talk Live as a, as a co-host, and we've had you here as a, as a co-host as well. And I just don't understand why people can't coexist. I don't understand why somebody who doesn't like the opinions of another person can't be in the same room with uh, that other person. It just seems so uh, petty and childish to me. I mean, here's the thing. Look, I would say that if, if, if Jeff Berwick were having somebody from the Communist Party come give an address at his thing, I might say, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with the Communist Party. Right. Yeah, definitely. So. But so get up on the stage and trash talk them. Then I mean, you know, if if it's a if it's an event worth going to, otherwise, the fact that they got one guy there that you don't like, it's just really ridiculous to pull out because of that. Right. And and the thing is, what it is, and there's a concerted effort amongst a certain factions of this movement to just strangle my career in its crib. Okay. And that's and that's really what it boils down to. And this is uh you know a vocal minority of people who try to just destroy everything that I get anywhere near. And we're dealing with that in a event a key invention. People were threatening to boycott that this October. Um, and it happens, you know, everywhere I go. And what I'm, you know, sort of hoping to pull off is that, you know, these people are doing it because it works. You know, and I think that uh, after uh, they, they realize that it fails a couple of times, I think they'll stop it. Yeah, that uh, it seems like they're enabling that behavior because they don't want to have a real conversation about issues that need to be discussed. Well, that's that's kind of what it is. I mean, my, my whole thing has been, okay, what's the issue that nobody wants to talk about? All right, that's my issue. Right. Mm -hmm. And I will take it up and I will I will do it come what may. And look, that causes me a great deal of strife. Right. And I I think there's a lot of people who think that it's not so much what you say, but how you say it. And I think that that's terribly dangerous. I think that libertarianism is a very specific philosophy, very well thought out, that really has a lot of important specific sticking points to it. And people who are just like, well, let's just say whatever and, and make it sound appealing to people. Well, that's not that's not what I came here to fight for. So I will pick it up and I will say exactly what needs to be said and i don't care how anybody feels about it and i'm not surprised that that ticks some people off alan thanks for the call tonight man appreciate hearing from you our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE that's 855-450-3733 it was funny because you and i were talking last week and you had just gotten booted from Liberty Fest NYC, and I said, ah, so Keenvention's the only event in the world willing to host Chris Cantwell as a speaker. And you said, oh, no, Anarchapulco's going to have me. And then less than 24 hours later, you were booted from yep, there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, more coming up here in moments, 855-450 free. You can take control of Free Talk Live on the Live Sunday edition. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. When commercials come on, don't push the button. Instead, listen. Even if you don't sell things for a living, you're still selling in the various conversations and transactions that make up your busy day. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. So take a lesson from Madison Avenue. Often the fewer words, the more effective the message. Like Jiffy Lube, where where you never need an appointment or the office max ad that says you supply the ambition we supply everything else how about online ticket broker stubhub.com the way in when it's sold out or cybercupidmatch.com's seductive go ahead it's okay to look how cleverly and succinctly can you distill your message for more tips hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. The idea that politicians are leaders. Check your premises on that one. Cutting proof. <laughs> really? <laughs> Would you really follow Barack Obama or George Bush? Would you really follow their every command? Would you follow their suggestions? Do you believe that politicians are somehow more knowledgeable than you are? That politicians are of a special group of people? They're a special little critter that uh, for some reason is uh, more I enlightened or educated? Constantly you can hear talking heads refer to the authorities or our leaders in Washington, and it's just, it's just patently absurd. I mean, these people are failures at life. That's why they became politicians. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, there's so many of them are attorneys. Uh, <laughs> the good attorneys make, make a money. whole bunch of money and retire with yachts. Uh, the, the unsuccessful ones go into politics. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Senior citizens, look out if you're in Indiana and you like to play Euchre. They're coming to get you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype username here is lrn.fm. Now, tomorrow night is the Skype-only edition of Free Talk Live. We're going to try that and we'll see how it goes. So prepare yourselves. If you don't yet have Skype, you should get an account for your smartphone or your computer and then uh, get it all set up before tomorrow night. So go and do that you're now. Just, you're just doing this. This is not like you're repairing your phone system. You're just doing this for kicks. I just want to try it. I want to see what happens just because sometimes the phones are so bad sounding and I'm, I, I've sort of become spoiled by Skype a little bit, I think. Right. And so I just want to see if we can make it happen for an entire show and see how that goes. Um, so we're going to get back into your phone calls here. But uh, since we were talking about conventions, you've been booted from a couple of them, Chris. You were explaining what happened there where it's, you know, a couple of people who are attending these conventions telling the organizer, I'm not going if you let Chris Cantwell come. Right. And I just spoiled brats throwing temper tantrums. I find it so offensive when people pull this uh, this card like, oh, well, I'm more important than this other person, and so therefore you will do as I say. Well, no, I, you know, and if and if a friend of mine or somebody that I'm friendly with does that, I'm not going to be a, not a friend with that person. I'm not going to ostracize that individual, but I'm also going to not side with them because by forcing me to make that choice, I will choose against the person who's putting me in that position. Right. That's that's my default position as well, too. If it's like, look, if I have if you're the one putting me on the spot, then you're the yep. one who goes, you know, yep. it's either it's either make it work or or get lost. You know, I was can't you that- get along with people? I mean, why can't you exist? It's a big place, right? Whatever convention it is, is a big room. You don't have to be touching the the person you don't like you don't have to have a conversation with that person in point of fact when that person's on stage you can leave the room if it's so offensive to you yeah i mean i was in this position with a with a woman not so long ago right when i first moved here I was dating a girl across the street mm-hmm. and um you know she's getting mad at me because i'm coming over doing free talk live and oh, i'm wow. like and i'm like look i'm going to do a radio show i'm a media personality what do you want from my life woman you know and she just says a freak out i'm like get the hell out of my house don't come back Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. It's the third annual Keenvention. It's also the third annual Keenvention with Chris Cantwell as an onstage performer. You were at the first one as, as part of the peace uh, discussion panel that we had with me and Derek J. Uh, last year, you were actually on two panels. I think there was the Coplock panel and, and the, the media, media panel. panel yeah. And 
you were able to actually be on a panel with somebody with whom you have a disagreement, and the two of you managed to exist on a stage at the same time. Imagine so, that. You know, it can be done, and everybody has a good time. I mean, with the, the feedback I get from Keenvention, I want people to tell me what you know they want to see better at Keenvention, but I always just get all this positive feedback, like, wow, it was really a great time. People had a, enjoyed each other's company, and that's all the, the feedback I've ever gotten about Keenvention. So this year, you're going to be a keynote speaker. And that's because, in my opinion, well, you deserve it. I mean, I, I select a keynote speaker for selecting keynote speakers for key invention is based on, well, who's sort of out there as a as an activist and is making headlines or whatever. Who's got something that is worth talking about and has an interesting story. And we've told some of your story tonight with your paradigm shift and dealing with the keen police and how that's really been kind of a shock to you and connecting with those folks. And I don't know what you're going to talk about. You get to pick that. It's your speech. Um, but I think that those are some of the things that make your first year back in in New Hampshire back here because you were here a couple of years ago and then you went yeah. back to New York for some work and and now you're back that I think it's been a real interesting year for Chris Cantwell and I think that sharing your story is uh, is going to be interesting and whatever you decide to cover that's cool and then there's an open microphone where anybody who wants to can come up and ask you questions yeah if people think I'm such a bad guy why don't you come up try to contradict me or catch me in a, a lie or something like that good luck with it or better yet just you know meet you afterwards and have a conversation yeah. have a conversation with somebody with whom uh, you think you disagree. In fact, we've had people call the show and send messages saying, you know, I thought Chris Cantwell was this terrible person before you guys had him on, and I've changed my mind. You know, people have said that about you, our, our listeners, who had these preconceived notions, having heard all these bad things about you, and then they find out, wow, there's a, there's a human being there. Yeah, I mean, it's basically my full-time job to get treated badly, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> like, this is what I do for a living. Like, I go out and I, I rustle people's jimmies, and then they go panic on the internet. And if all you hear is what some third party says, I did some terrible thing out of context, yeah. then then you know then yeah you're going to think I'm a bad guy one of the one of the, the main benefits that I got out of being on free talk live was people got to know me a little bit better That's right. and people who know me don't think I'm a terrible person. Keenvention.info. You can go there if you want. You can go back in time and watch all the videos from the past ones. We, we record everything on the stage at Keenvention so you can see what it's like. And uh, the thing you don't see when you're watching the videos is what it's like offstage, where it's an intimate convention with maybe a few dozen people in the room at any given time. It's real small. And that's a good thing because it means you get to connect with people. You get to meet these activists that you hear a lot about here on Free Talk Live and get to actually, you know, get to know them. There's some cool social events. Events. We're going to be doing Hallo Keen for the second time this year, which I'm excited about. It was great last year. It's going to be even better. We get a better venue. We get to go later uh, this year at Hallo Keen, and uh, Derek J is going to be involved in some of the organizing of that. So I'm really happy about that. Still, we're putting together some of the panels, and I've got some more announcements coming soon. But Daryl Perry is the other keynote speaker. There's going to be a third one who I haven't figured out yet. So it's not like I haven't announced it. I don't know who it's going to be yet. Uh, so Keenvention.info. Tickets are 60 bucks. That gets you in for the entire weekend, and that gets you into Hello Keen. Right on. And look, if you were thinking about, look, I was uh, the the uh, event I had in October was Liberty Fest NYC, and I imagine that a bunch of you are holding tickets for that. Go get your refunds, okay? Go get your refunds. Come to Keenvention instead. Uh, we're gonna we're going to have a blast, and we're not afraid to touch on the subjects that other people are going to shy away from. Let's let's do something radical. Let's do something different. Let's stop being scared little brats and do something interesting. Keenvention.info. Let's go to your phone calls and thoughts. Earl is listening in New York. Uh, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Earl. Hey, hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Oh, well, going about this smoking bans, as you probably know, down in New York City, the bill was signed by the mayor, and also out in the state of Hawaii. I don't know about California, but they banned 18 to 21 year olds from getting cigarettes. Oh my goodness! In Hawaii. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It what do you think about that, Earl? About a month ago. Oh, I don't think they realized the economic, because well, quite a while ago, here in New York State, man, we pay through the nose for uh, buying smoking material. Mm -hmm. That's why I've now been going for the last five years that, we have a Native American store where I get my smoking material. What's the difference in price? Campus. What's what's the difference between going to the Indian reservation or the Indian uh, American Indian store versus the corner store in New York City? What kind of price difference on a pack of cigarettes? Well, here in upstate, um, it's 
like, okay, a uh, pack of Marlboros or Kumos or like uh, 12 bucks a pack. And for a carton of, say, like, uh, my roommate has the, uh, the made of uh, menthol 100s and get a whole carton for $28.50. That's so a big difference. Even... Well, But you're downgrading yeah. your cigarettes at that point as well, right? You're not getting the brand name cigarettes no, for that. No. Who cares? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Good. It does matter. I mean, I was very particular about my no. smoking, right? Like to go, okay. like I did, I downgraded. So I was a Newport smoker. And then at some point I went down to the Seneca's. Um, and I and used to buy Indian them at the reservation? Indian Reservation as well. But what drove me crazy about it, and I don't know if they do the same thing in upstate New York, was that every time the state raised the tax, the Indian Reservation raised their prices. <laughs> and that's what got me onto the e-cigarette. I, I said, I came here to avoid the tax, not to pay it to a different authority, mm. you scumbags. Earl, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing <laughs> from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We got Ted. He's on the line in Providence. Ted, go ahead. You're on Free Talk Live. How's it going? Welcome, sir. Uh, Go ahead. That was for Christopher Cantwell. The, you're asking him how's it going? Uh, yeah. Get on with it! <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, I wanted to, um, first off, um, my, my issue is abortion, but I wanted to add that, you know, them picking you off of, uh, out of anarcho polka just means that they want you. They want to just talk about one thing, I guess. Stand by, Ted. Thank <laughs> God you're bringing up that issue at the end of the show. Uh, more in moments here. We've got one more segment. That's enough time for you if you want to join us. Get on the phones right now at 855-450-FREE because I don't know when Chris Cantwell is going to be back in the studio here on Free Talk Live. He's unbanned. We're coming up. Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Now, a twice as nice Twin Kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? 
Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Maybe enough time for you if you join us now. Toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. We'll talk about the Euchre thing later on. I don't think we're going to have time to get to that tonight because we actually do have some folks that want to join us here on the phones. Also via Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. Don't forget to check out some of Chris uh, Cantwell's work over at his website, ChristopherCantwell.com. Right now you can go there and you'll find his article about Chalk the Police as well as the video that uh, I posted over at Free Keen and much more, including the Radical Agenda podcast. Yep, you can get a Radical Agenda at RadicalAgenda.com or at ChristopherCantwell.com. And it's a once-a-week thing, uh, at least for now, on Fridays. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, Fridays from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, I've been entertaining maybe doing it a five-day-a-week show. I'm talking to the audience about that. Okay, cool. That's a huge commitment, but if you do it, I think that, uh, that'd that be pretty cool. So let's go right to your calls and thoughts. Ted is still with us here. Uh, Ted, you barely got your thoughts out in the last segment, so I wanted to make sure you had a chance. Go ahead. All right, awesome. So... Uh... Ross Bart tried to tackle the issue of abortion through the eviction, uh, you know, theory. I was just thinking to myself that really, like, it might not be, you know, as humane a way to look at it, but property rights already deals with the issue of abortion, considering that, um, you know, the baby is um, the mother and father the product of the mother and father's labor thus is property, at least until a certain point. And, uh, and thus the, the life, you know, I, there's an old saying that mothers used to uh, use against their children in order to keep them in check. I brought you into this world. I can bring you out or, or put you back out. Rather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think Rothbard went terribly wrong. In Ethics of Liberty, Murray Rothbard talks about the abortion issue. It's like, well, you can't uh, – he says you can't kill the baby, right? But you can evict the baby from the mother's womb, and then the baby's on its own, right? That, that basically, Which, of course, it would not be able to feed itself, and so it would starve to death, right? Uh, uh, well, and, you know, maybe it's not even at this point viable outside of the womb, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're going to say, you know, you're in the first three months of a pregnancy and you're going to, yeah. you know, induce labor, well, what you're doing is you're creating a miscarriage, right? But but it's not your – that's not your problem because mm-hmm. you have no obligation. I think that that and a lot of the stuff that I hear about parental obligations in libertarian uh, circles is absolutely horrific. It sounds really cold. It's yeah. terrible. So, I mean, even if you're talking about a baby who's, you know, let's say you're eight months pregnant, you evict the baby from the womb, like by by the Rothbardian ethical standard, you can, uh, and it's one of very few things they disagree with Rothbard right. on. Right, you're a big fan of his, that, that you can just, like, evict the baby and just, you know, go leave it off in the, uh, on a snowbank to just die of freezing and exposure, right? Or just, you know, go put the thing in a, a corner somewhere and let it cry until it's dead. And that's sick. 
uh, I would say that, look, nobody uh, gets to childbearing age in this world these days and does not know where babies come from. You incur obligations through your actions. And I've got an article on my website titled um, uh, On Evictionism and Abortion where I say, look, imagine that I go and I start creating pipe bombs in my garage preparing for the zombie apocalypse, and then at the end of the season finale of The Walking Dead, I lose interest. I can't just go throw these things in the garbage can and wait for the trash man to come pick it up because if his trash compactor goes and crushes these mm. things and explodes it, I'm now responsible for the life and property that those things destroy. That would definitely be criminal negligence at the very least. Certainly. So if I go and I create a baby, I can either be responsible for the proper care and feeding of that infant or I could be responsible for its death. And the only way that I can, uh, you know, uh, 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 how do I say I know, get rid of that obligation okay. is to have somebody else take it over. Now, the thing that Rothbard does make the point of in Ethics of Liberty is that, you know, in the absence of the state, uh, adoption will be a lot easier. So if you evict a viable uh, fetus and then somebody's going to go put it in an incubator for a little while, there's plenty of people who are like, I love babies, right? There's sure. no shortage of people in this world Lots who love children. Lots of people children. want babies, but they can't have them. Right. But right now, the adoption process, in, at least in the United States, is so ridiculous, you're going to pay $100,000, 150000 and you're probably going to be importing the baby from across the planet yeah. and that's Thank why the over that. a million babies are aborted in abortion clinics every year in the united states infants are being created in such staggering numbers but people are going to go pay 150 grand to pull a kid over from india and it's all the regulatory process yeah, it's sure. sick ted uh you you're making a, a a couple of good points but my retort would be that you're not following this to its conclusion right like in the absence of the state uh you're your babies are going to be more your property than they are even right now. And thus the actions that you take with your property is, is, you know, up to you, right? Like you can make the case that it's the same as like throwing bombs in the trash can where it's going to damage other people's property. But whenever you're only damaging your own property, that's a little bit different. So the case that Ted's making here is that the baby is property. And I, and, and my, my premise on this is that, yes, it's the result of the mother and father's labor, and usually the result of your labor is your property. But we're talking about a human being. And, and, basic, and basic libertarian principle says you don't own human beings, okay? So a, a baby mm. owns itself. Now, a mother and father are sort of the stewards of that custodianship, right? The caretakers. They, they, yeah. have to, they, they have to, you know, guide the child. Look, if the child wants to have a steady diet of cocaine and, and and Tic Tacs, you know, you don't you don't let a baby do that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you you have to. They, they are going to control an infant's life, so they are stewards of that relationship. But it's the same thing if you tell me that I've got to you know go take care of your house for a little while. You expect me not to burn it down. I'm supposed to be a good steward of that custodianship, and so a parent has a basic obligation to do right by the 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 child, which they are, are obligated. It's essentially, to. it's a social obligation, more, and that's really it's a. That's what it is, right? It's like not a contract or anything that you've specifically agreed to, but it's just that people won't tolerate you well, if you don't I would, follow that I would say that, that it's an implicit contract with the child. Now, we don't have agency in it, so I'm not saying that we can go out and yeah. ban abortions or go and enforce things against mothers who abort their babies, but I would say that it's entirely uh, appropriate to ostracize them from a society. The, 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 the issue there is that you are, you are supposed to be taking – you incur obligations. If I go walk into a restaurant and I order some food, they don't make me sign a contract That's in advance right. that I'm going to pay it. It's an implicit contract. Right. I have incurred an obligation by doing a thing, by creating an infant. We all know how babies are made, okay? Nobody gets pregnant by accident. I'm sick of hearing about this. People don't get pregnant by accident. They know where babies come from. They're, it's easy enough to avoid. So unless somebody's being raped, then there's there's a, there's a potential to avoid this. So you're incurring an obligation when you create a life to be a good steward of that life. Ted, thanks for your call tonight. Let's talk to Brian. He is in, I believe, Nashua, New Hampshire. Brian, you're on via Skype with Ian and Chris. Great to be on with the last last segment here. Yes, sir. You guys were talking about the art of persuasion in terms of being able to relate with people that you know might not have the same ideas as you. I encourage you to to uh, exercise more Socratic reasoning as an approach. If you take an approach of pure ignorance and you, and you just kind of question the person until they realize that they contradict themselves, you give them the opportunity to intellectually uh, for intellectual growth. Right. So if you don't assume that your position is the right is the right one, because the point of what what I what bothers me most about the liberty movement is that everyone assumes that they're correct. 
right? But they never actually, or so they're never actually under willing to like explore the premises that underlie their own beliefs. So we, we understand non-aggression principles. So if you actually take that principle, ask somebody if they agree with it, right, and then see where they contradict themselves, they have an opportunity to grow, and then maybe you can move more people to the other side. Well, I, I think that that can be a useful tactic, the sort of Socratic dialogue where you you know, you know ask people questions and let them jam themselves up. But my experience has been that people are very comfortable with contradiction, and that's part of the problem. That's why people are reaching such catastrophically bad conclusions when they're out making uh, decisions. People believe that the world is very fuzzy. People believe that it's okay to contradict. And so they, don't, uh, they might not even see it. They you might know. not even see the contradiction. Or you, even if you point it out, you could say, "Well, you just said this and you just said that, right?" We had this conversation with the officer the other day that you know, I, you know, if he says to me, "Well, if if I tell you that you jump off that building, you're going to break your leg. Are you going to jump off the building?" And I say, "Of course not." And he says, "Well, if I tell you you're going to walk down the street with a beer, you're going to get arrested." And I said, "Well, if I tell a woman that if she walks down the street in a tube top, she's going to get raped, nobody's going to accept that. It's obvious mm -hmm. contradiction, but the guy doesn't take it." So I mean, I, my my mo, and I think a lot of libertarians' mo, since Sometimes it's not the best effective tactic with everybody, but I speak with conviction. I say, no, this is the right answer, and here's why it's the right answer, and I'm going to speak with a sense of authority and try to convince people. And sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does, but it's a it's a different, you know, tactics for different things, of course. All right. Well, I like, there's a similar attitude, like somebody like Jan Helfeld, I guess, is somebody that's popularized the method, uh, I guess, kind of embarrassing people in interviews and things like that. But if you get if you do actually end up getting like an emotional reaction from uh, just uh, objective questioning, it's more telling of the person's uh, intellectual integrity. So you can see if you want to associate them yourself with that person. In the I've seen place. Jan Helfeld's work on YouTube. It's some of it's very entertaining. He sits down with sort of big name celebrities at these conferences and basically asks them questions until they get up and storm away. <laughs> so I don't know if he's really persuading them with his questioning, but you know, maybe they think about it later. It's a good thing for the audience anyway. Hey, yeah, it is certainly entertaining. Hey, thanks, uh, Brian, for your call tonight. And thanks, Chris, for coming in here. I'm Glad to, man. Fun. Thank you very much. Me. Mark will be back tomorrow night. We'll see you in the meantime online over at freetalklive.com. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP, and right now you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. Device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever, Transcend, is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call MiniCPAP.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, July 19th, 2015. 
Silver is trading at $14.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,134 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $275. Antiwar.com.